Hello everyone, welcome to the fourth and final day of International Conclave in Emerging Technologies, which is focused on HR panel discussion for the day. Right, so let me get started by introducing you to our speakers for today. The first speaker is IVS Raghunath. He is HR head of Sriram Bioseed Genetics and is considered to be one of the top 100 leaders. Ranga is a HR journalist well known in academic circles as a keynote speaker. His passion lies in motivating and guiding teams and helping students to realize their potential through various interactions with them. His experience spreads across manufacturing plants, FMCGs, IT and product development, ITES and telecom industry. We welcome you all, Ranganath. So our second speaker for today is Ita Lakshmi Pati. He is the Human Resource Director at GVK Bio. So he's also popularly known as Lee and considered as Guru by a number of HR professionals. So Ita is into recruitment, compensation and benefits, performance management, HR operations, MBA, MNS, implementation of HR applications and is also a certified coach. We welcome you all, Ita. Then the third speaker for today is Lakshman Kumar Kodupaka, Senior HR Recruiter at Allied NGA Human Resources for Asia Pacific and Japan region. He is an excellent orator and a Toastmaster. He is also a talent acquisition head with strong experience in managing and setting up recruitment processes, system procedures for the product development, startups and large-scale organizations. So he founded Hyderabad Human Capital Fraternity with around senior HRs with a vision of building a strong, spirited, robust network of HR professionals across the world. So Blackbuck tied up with HYHCF and for a number of collaborative activities. We have already done a few mock interviews as part of our Center of Excellence and career guidance sessions as well. Some of the students have been offered internships through this platform as well. Thank you so much, Lakshman. Thank you. So the fourth speaker for today is Srikant Arya. Welcome, sir. So he is the Chief Digital Imaginist at Enzen Group, United Kingdom. He is an experienced business leader focusing on transformative enablement of digital technologies with a strong domain and technology experience spanning advisory, architecture, systems integration, pre-sales, new business development and execution. One of the founding teams of Enzen, Srikant played a key role in growing the organization into one of the top organizations in the sector of energy and utilities in the United Kingdom. Welcome, Srikant. Yeah. Thank you. So, Thank you. So let's get started with the session for today. And I request all students to make it as interactive as possible. Keep asking questions. Uh, the answers will be provided to you by the end. There will be a 10 minute break in the between uh, where we'll discuss about center of excellence activities. And for all queries, the to, uh, since, uh, since today is the last day, the certificate will be provided to you all in the next one week. So if anybody, any student doesn't get a certificate before 10th of July, they can reach out to us through the WhatsApp groups that are there. All right. So let's begin our session and I will hand it over to the moderator for today's panel. Ms. Andrada Tota, CEO of Blackbird. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much, Vishnu. Thanks for the introductions. Yeah. And I'm very uh, delighted to be uh, in uh, with the, to hold such a panel, uh, to hold such a panel discussion. Uh, welcome all of you. So I will start today with a very important question. Uh, all the students are a little bit uh, uh, in, in a dilemma or do not have a clear understanding of what's happening around uh, during the pandemic. So I will ask the I will start uh, with this first question. Please provide each of your understanding about the current situation and uh, how it has changed. Uh, for the past six months, how recruitment processes or uh, the kind of skills that has changed from the past six months. So I can uh, please start with Lakshman. Lakshman, can you please provide your understanding about the current situation, both from the uh, organization point of view and for the job seekers and especially for the students who are in the campuses, how it has changed over the past six months. 
All right. Thank you, Anu. Thank you all. Uh, very good afternoon. And firstly, thank you for Black Ducks for providing me this opportunity. Yeah, I think we are living with a new normal and I, I think we should live with a new normal. Uh, it's been four months now. There has been a radical change in what we have been doing. So earlier, work from home was a kind of a pleasure for us. I think uh, we used to take every Friday or a Monday whenever we had some kind of an overlap with our home and work. That's how the work from home was designed. But off late, we never imagined that we are used to this kind of environment for so long. Especially for the kind of nature of job we are doing, work from home was something which is not a normal to us. But what has changed is the pandemic situation. So from the hiring standpoint, uh, there has been a significant change for us, which we can definitely cover in detail. But what happening off late in this last few months was the hiring. So we have been hiring in good numbers, there has been no change in the hiring. But what has changed was the techniques which we used to do and the interview process and the kind of tech, uh, what you said, the methodology which we used to do in the past has changed or has been a significant involvement. And other than that, what also has changed from our stand is the kind of work flexibility which we have given to the customers. I think that has changed. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like this, we have seen a lot. So going forward, we'll be discussing and what is this change and probably how do we embrace this change? So I will also ask, you know, I want all the panelists to speak on the same thing. So Ranga, can you please uh, tell what is, what your opinion is? Do you have a different opinion or what your opinion is about how the, pan how the pandemic has changed the recruitment procedures or how it affected the aspirations of job seekers? Yeah, I know. Good afternoon, all students, and uh, thank you for all colleagues and co-panelists. -co and uh, thank you, Black Bucks, uh, for giving such a wonderful opportunity to share some of the insights. And, you know, uh, I would say that, you know, if you can see the nomenclature of BC, you know, BC means before Christ. That's what, you know, we all know that. But today, the kind of current situation we're talking about, BC, DC, AC. Uh, BC doesn't mean that, you know, uh, before COVID, and DC during COVID, and AC after COVID. So that's a kind of situation. The nomenclature has been changed, whether we agree or not. That's a fact. So as we all know that setbacks are common to all individuals, you know, which are unique to person to person. But today we're all having the common, you know, a setback, which is a COVID. The unprecedented, irrespective of the race, irrespective of the, irrespective of the grade, levels, organization segments, we're all facing this kind of unprecedented situations, which is a common to all. Today, we are talking about the, the COVID situations. Yes, of course, the situations will come and pandemic situations will always arise. But we also need to understand how we need to, one should enhance the existing competencies to one level to another level, which is the most important aspect in today's world of you know, business. In fact, the market has been changed. You know, the business models have been changed and the kind of curriculums have been changed. But everything is changing. Then what one has to also need to change the kind of competencies. Today, organizations are looking for in such a way the pre-COVID competencies and post-COVID competencies. I think you as a student, I think, you know, you must answer yourself. You must question yourself. See, last three months, we are, you know, spending 90 days, more than 90 days, we are all spending at home, work from home kind of thing. Now, you need to question yourself. How I have improved my competencies before 90 days and during 90 days and after 90 days? Is I am adding any kind of value to my curriculum, which is the most important aspect one should think about it. And coming to the industry aspect, yes, most of the segments have been impacted. Yes, we must uh, agree that the kind of segments like you know retail, the infrastructure segment has been impacted, bit of IT has been impacted, and uh, auto has been auto industry has been impacted. But having said that, some of the segment really gone up very well. The revenues. If you talk about the telecom industry, telecom revenues have really gone up because today we're all using the data, and if the morning we start, you know day starts with the data. And the day ends with the data because of uh, all things are happening. Work from home, high you know uh, uh, network we are using, high database we are using. That means the telecom is really is gone up. So in the same way, some of the segments, uh, untapped segments like you know agriculture, like you know fertilizers, which are the essential commodities to the Indian organ Indian economy. So these segments are not really so impacted. So having said that, what I am trying to say that here, you know, industry has been impacted, but in the same way. Nothing has stopped. Even today, if you ask me, as Lakshman clearly mentioned that I from the coming from the agriculture industry, seed industry, I've been offered around 56 candidates last 90 days. 
we conducted we in fact we recently uh, you know introduced management trainees from across all india campuses you know uh, july 1st is my on virtual onboarding you know we made an offer virtual interviews virtual onboarding and virtual offers also been made so yes industry is changing and competencies are changing business models are also changing so i think we need to live in the you know, new normal that one everyone has to accept that but the biggest question mark for all of us including me and including all of us we are all sitting here how i need to enhance the competencies which are very relevant to the market very relevant to myself which is the biggest you know area of thinking one should think about it that's my perspective okay thank you so much ranga as you said it's re- i mean like we have been uh, changing say if you uh, take past 10 years or 20 years the change has been gradual just that the change has been really really very fast past few months so you know even the probably will have to adapt to it really very fast instead of the slow adaptation it has been forced on forced on us really very fast so yeah i thought um, good afternoon so i've been asking the same question i want to pick all of you uh, because you are all from different sectors different organizations so i just want to uh, want to pick up your um, opinion on how it has changed totally the last 6 months also the other panels have mentioned that it has been quite uh, quite different on how they are recruiting how they are onboarding everything has been quite different so what's your experience and opinion for what's happening around in past 6 months uh, i think you know the whole uh, confusion or the shift in thinking has happened only in the last 3 uh, months or so you know prior to 3 t- months you know everything was pretty normal and honestly speaking you know even right now uh, i think things are normal uh, it's just that we have started to experience a different uh, way of working you know uh, we have to unlearn a few of uh, what we were doing in the past uh and right now what we are doing is something new to all of us honestly speaking we are all freshers at this point in time you know while you have invited us to be a panel member i consider myself as a fresher because uh three generations have never faced such a shift paradigm shift in the way we are expected to work so this is a new way of working and we are also getting used to it you know not that we are any experienced people in terms of managing things but the but the uh, only difference between a true fresher versus an experienced to freshers like us you know all of us on the panel is that uh, you know uh, because of the experience that we carry we are able to unlearn few things and we have started to adapt to the new ways of working you know the key for any fresh talent you know to do well is to adapt to the existing environment you know environment keeps changing around us the way we adapt to the environment will make us more successful anurada you are on mute yeah thank you so much uh, srikan just wanted to find out uh, what's the climate in uk say uk has always been advanced so you might uh, might have been all, already using a lot of technology for say digital you know learning digital development and all these things have always been there so is there any major change that requires huge adaptability from job seekers uh firstly thank you anuradha for the opportunity and uh, uh, good afternoon all the this is shrikant from uh, uh, UK I think good perspective you know I'm probably I'm not from the HR domain as uh, most of the other panelists are but uh, probably I want to add uh, you know my perspective uh, probably more of a global perspective and uh, you know an employer's perspective of where we are seeing the market but the the truth is yes definitely there is an impact there is a, a big impact and uh, I think the previous speaker as he said this is something which we are not used to uh, at least you know none of us have seen in our generation uh, the kind of impact but the way i am seeing in in the sector where where we are specializing and i'm speaking to a number of cios ceos um, you know over the last few weeks is that definitely this will bounce back so uh, you know while uh, i am an optimist i don't believe that it's a matter of time um, but it will bounce back but what is true is it will bounce back in a different way so the new normal will continue for some time i think that's that's for certain now few trends that we are seeing is obviously when things come back to uh you know i would say more normalcy it will be a buyers market 
because uh, like it or not the market has been impacted the jobs are impacted you know the truth is yes definitely we are seeing an impact uh, in the uk you know I, I do a lot of work globally australia us and we are seeing an uh, um, you know a drop in the market but what we will see is that when the market comes back uh, you know uh, there'll be a bit of pressure on the employers on the cost because people have uh, definitely lost uh, on the revenue side so people will be more cautious in terms of the spending so my my advice to the student uh, students is to sort of uh, be much more smarter you know in terms of uh, how do we respond back there'll be a lot of focus in my view on innovation so people will be looking at you know some kind of that will be looking at different ways of uh, different ways of recruiting um, in terms of broad technologies i, I don't really see a, a big shift you know we will continue to uh, look at technologies like uh, cloud computing or automation um, the emphasis on data will definitely change you know people will try to uh, see how much they can uh, see more business value from data so i, I see there is a big shift coming in terms of uh, the adoption of data led uh, uh, thinking that will definitely happen but my um, advice anuradha to the students is that we, you know we need to be uh, more innovative uh, in terms of our uh, our thinking um, what i am really seeing now is that uh, more and more approach towards the webinars so you know i'm seeing lot of uh, social connect happening you know extreme social connect happening every organization is trying to promote their thinking and we should participate more because uh, for example at enzen what we are now suggesting is that you know there'll be more i feel there'll be more hackathon kind of uh, events uh, coming in the next couple of months where we would encourage uh, the young generation to come and uh, um, you know tell their ideas but it has to be slightly different so what what i don't really see is that yes it may not be um, you know there are 50 jobs in the market we we apply for the jobs but what we will see is that there'll be more um, you know innovation uh, challenges so the government of uk is spending a lot of money you know almost to the tune of uh, 200 250 million particularly the sector that i come from okay and this is they are opening up for innovation they are encouraging um, young talent uh, data science area of data science and ai to come and join and we will have access to employers like us will have access to such funds and we will encourage the young generation to come participate uh, you know in those events and be part of it and yes it will be a slower journey but definitely it will happen You're on mute, Anuradha. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, thank you so much, uh, Srikant and uh, uh, and panelists. Srikant's time I have taken till uh, two thirty p.m. our time. So my next question also will be to Srikant. So Srikant, uh, so the, the learning and development has always uh, been really on in good focus in uh, in UK. And uh, how does how is it changing now? You know, are you are these organizations promoting learning and development or are you expecting people to be ready for a post covid situation so what are the skills that you are expecting new skills from from freshers or from people fresh from college what are the new skills that you are expecting people to come with so uh, another uh, you know as such from a skills point of view i am not really seeing uh, seeing a, a big shift you know the, the the demand which existed pre covid uh, uh, the, the, probably the similar demands will exist post covid okay but ag again thing is you know how do you sort of meet the demand you know it probably to be uh, slightly slower it will be uh, you know uh, the demand will be met in a slightly different way but if i pick up you know certain areas for example where uh, my discussions with the with the, the 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 cxo community is coming is that the first area i would pick up is definitely there'll be a big shift in terms of the um uh, the learnings from data you know both government uh, uh the energy sector that i come from um, i'm i'm also speaking to people from the, the retail and manufacturing which has been really badly hit but the way they think is that when they come back they would really like to see how they can use the existing data within the organization to learn further so the learning aspect from the existing uh, data that exists within the organization uh, will be much faster because the organizations have realize that what they have not learned from the data that exists okay versus what they would learn that will give them the competitive edge so the competitive edge will come from the learning based on the data that exists that's one area uh, the second area where i've seen what what uh, the new normal will uh, sort of uh, impact is uh, you know self service so what what the organizations are now getting prepared is that 
they feel that if there is a second wave or potentially if there is another pandemic coming in 2020 is that how do they be better prepared so that the impact what they had now should not be repeated so one of the areas they're looking at is for example that okay can i really manage my business with 30 percent of my field force always working from home so what does that mean in terms of access to the system there is a big impact on cyber security in fact i was uh, was speaking on a, a webinar very recently so the whole point was uh, you know if if 30% uh, of my staff has to work from home continue to work from home and provide the services as normal so i will not ha i will have to provide the level of access to my employees from home okay uh, the networks could be different the access points could be different and how can i be still equally confident and assured that the level of security that was provided well everyone was working from a secured office environment is done so the the entire sort of the architecture the ecosystem of provisioning of the data the accessibility of the data will be will have to be thought through and 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 organizations are working uh, you know to look at how do they provide the same level of access and that will also mean anuradha that uh, there'll be a more, more and more uh, emphasis on technologies like cloud, which are already more secure. So uh, I have now talking to organizations who have been sort of holding them back, uh, you know, from moving to the cloud. Now they feel it is really right time that they move some of their critical applications into cloud because that way they get the the, the automated uh, assurance around security and access. So there'll be, I feel that there'll be a lot of opportunities for uh, students to see that okay if organizations now want to move their data their applications onto cloud you know how is that uh, enabled okay that's one thing other area another where i see definitely some opportunities are coming is uh, uh, in the automation area okay so now again traditionally where organizations were uh, i would say partially automated you know they were operating at a 60 70% of automation now with the post covid situation they would like to see that okay if, if i don't have access to the the level of staff which I had before. So how can I fill the gap through automation? So technologies like RPA, technologies like hyper automation, uh, there'll be an increasing trend. You know, I'm already seeing, uh, you know, organizations like Accenture, UI, they, there is a big focus on sort of, uh, you know, they call it RPA 2.0. So how do we sort of bring the, 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 the human machine collaboration in a much better way? So that that's another uh, trend um, we will be seeing. Now, some areas where I would see a dip, dip in the in the investment is the traditional um, spend that was happening in the IT area, like ERP automation. You know, uh, spending um, money on ERPs like Oracle or SAP. That probably will slow down because uh, shift in priorities. So now the the organization will look at where should I be spending my IT budget. So speaking to the CIOs recently, they are saying, Shrikan, probably if I have a, a hundred million budget on IT. I would probably not spend more on the traditional, uh, you know, day-to-day -day software like the CRMs of the world, the SAPs of the world. I, I see probably that trend will come back and that money will be spent more on making sure that operationally the organizations are more ready. Okay. They are more safe and secure. Resilience is a big, big term the organizations in UK, Australia are using because what they have to guarantee to the customers, you know, I work for the energy industry. So we provide we work with customers who provide gas power water to uh, you know millions of uh, homes in uk so the biggest challenge is that tomorrow if the electricity company do not have access to all the staff how do they guarantee their you know 15 20 million customers that yes there'll be power at home you know there'll be water at home so that resilience is a very very important factor and all the systems that are required to provide that level of resilience will be very very important so the focus in my view will probably shift from supporting the IT system to the operation technology systems. Okay, so there'll be more spend I'm now uh, expecting on uh, technologies like IoT. So they'll be, you know, for example, they'll try to see that can I now sense my network in a bigger way and the start when they start sensing their network, the amount of data that you'll be getting, how do I learn from the data and security? So these are some of the areas another I feel there'll be an increased focus. Okay, and for students who really want to, uh, you know, pick up a career, probably they should be focusing on some of these areas for the next three years. Excellent, actually. So what I gather is cloud is where, you know, you are readying the infrastructure for all the employees or whoever 
on boards onto the job to be available and improving the resilience so that the customers are very uh, are confident that you know business runs as usual for them yes so yeah. it's cloud is internet of things then rpa you have mentioned yeah these are very important points of course yes the, the time of erps is going slowly down um, yeah i understand that so one last question to you uh, shrikant uh, so now that you know it doesn't matter uh, you know your employees working from home in uk and employees working from home in india it doesn't matter much so how does you know will will you also consider students who are getting into job market or who are starting up their careers in the same way as you recruit in uk so how how is the thinking in that direction absolutely that's a very good point anurag i think yes the 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 you know approach will become more global uh, you know we are now seeing trends that if if us is stopping the the number of uh, visas because what will happen is that each country will now try to protect their own jobs because of the number of job losses so in uk we are talking about huge amount of job losses so there'll be a natural trend for the for the organizations to look at uh, local first okay but what will also happen is that because that the talent is available globally there'll be a natural shift for a uh, lot of larger organization i'm not just talking it but i'm talking across the board the organization now there is because there is access to the technology in fact now we are able to do most of our work using zoom calls okay so i definitely see you know including nzen we are not talking about you know some of the large work that we are doing how can we do that uh, you know from offshore so while while there'll be a constraint uh, in the global market in terms of provisioning of jobs locally okay i see that as an opportunity because what that would mean is that you know there be similar jobs they would like to look at how how can they you know buy that talent from outside the country yeah so in the beginning i mentioned that you know we we need to be much more smarter in terms of uh, our approach because you know this is not a traditional uh, a way of doing things so uh, i was talking to in fact i was talking to one organization they are saying that they want to really uh, depend on crowdsourcing so they are saying that now shrikant if i have got uh, you know so much of uh, requirement okay and i i have uh, um, you know the short of talent pool i would really like to see how crowdsourcing can help me do that so there are certain areas of work where there is crowdsourcing what would that mean that if there is a, a, a person in best of chennai or hyderabad who can provide that amount of service in a, in a secured manner the organization will be willing to buy that so they will they will create a pool okay or or a registered of um, you know could be individual or small suppliers across the globe and this is the concept of crowdsourcing so for example i need to develop an rpa uh, script for example okay so what i'll do is that i will put it on a marketplace think that hey i am looking for uh, this particular piece of work and let people come and bid for that work so now this will be opened up across the globe need not be restricted to uk so it can go to hyderabad it can go to chennai any parts of the world and the technology is available you have access to the uh, you know the the infrastructure available to the, as long as you can do the work in a safe and secure manner follow the right standard you know people are willing to buy that from you so yes definitely there will be a, a a global expansion in terms of the thinking the organization you know crowdsourcing in my view will be uh, you know more and more uh, allowed and achievable okay thank you so much uh, uh, shrikant yeah that is such good news for all the students listening to this that uh, students you can work from here get employment in uk or us or australia anywhere um, so we have the biggest crowd shrikant in case you want to consider we have lot of crowd for absolutely. you absolutely yes, yes very much so thank you in so fact, much in fact uh, we have done a we have done a very small pilot uh, with a with a uh, few uh, data science students from um, indian statistical institute calcutta so we were doing a piece of work and uh, we wanted to trial out uh, during this covid time so we engaged with a small team of uh, you know, students from isi calcutta who were doing their masters in in in, in statistics okay so we we gave them a challenge we gave them a challenge they came out with a um, with, with a problem statement you know like a use case based approach we, they developed uh, an algorithmic approach to the the problem and and i think now we are actively considering uh, you know engaging them with further so they are being mentored by one of the professors in isi so i am seeing this is a new model uh, anuradha definitely we will look at knowledge pods across the world we will engage with those knowledge pods 
and and we will see how best we can leverage their talent uh, you know across the globe thank you so much srikant thanks for joining and uh, yeah i am really very good information for the students on what technologies they have to focus on and uh, what kind of opportunities are awaiting them this is a new trend and really exciting to hear that and uh, students can start preparing to conform to the standards that are required across the world so that you know once uh, the pay pay also changes right when when you get an employment in uk sitting in uh, india that's so exciting so thank you Absolutely. so much srikant for uh, the valuable insights um yeah any questions from the students are sending some questions but uh, i will send the questions uh, please to you and uh, we will relay that to the students later thank you so much thank you thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, best of luck to the students thank you okay okay so uh, panelists my next question is i just want to know uh, the students are here of course to understand uh, uh, you know what is in it for them but uh, they also probably would not get an opportunity to speak to hrs very frequently so i would like to know what what has been very fulfilling fulfilling uh, responsibility as the hr so i would like to ask lakshman what was the most fulfilling aspect of uh, being a human resource manager okay so currently at this moment uh, it is very different because uh, we are losing the physical touch which we used to have a lot of uh, engagement activities or what are the support we used to give right so that's, the situation is different than what we what we had or what we used to be earlier so the actual core Uh, we call it in our aspect as talent management so i think that essence is what we need to really show as a human resource person and uh, most important thing is especially for the employees we should be uh, supporting them because more than the pandemic there are a lot of issues towards mental health so we need to ensure that we are there to stand with them at these tough times i think as a hr person it is uh, very vital that we should be there for them to be at what are the crisis and we understand some situations are not normal especially some industries as ranga has mentioned have been very adversely affected because of this pandemic so there are also some concepts which as a hr we are working out together in one platform that is called as outplacement service so any company or any human workforce has been impacted because of this pandemic so they will collate the information and they will share with the fellow hr fraternity or fellow community professionals and within the circle so that they can help them with other opportunities that is one more way and there are multiple platforms which even uh, one more company called param has initiated and even accenture has in, done this globally uh, i think as of now for accenture it is limited to us market but there is a bigger possibility from multiple platforms and especially uh, collaborating uh, with hrs and these companies is a good deal where they can also help the people who are affected i think that is something which we need to think Uh, differently and help the affected from what we are from the normal standpoint and from the tool standpoint and uh, how you want to do because yesterday also we were discussing on the same topic how we can measure the productivity because given the situation here we are dealing with a new normal with household domestic work as well as office work so it is more important how we actually engage our staff so as a hr you also need to ensure that this is a personal connect because how much ever you do it is virtual so you need to give a feel that sense of belongingness to the people i think that is most important for any hr okay thank you so much uh, i have a question to you is uh, what is the biggest challenge that you are facing as far as recruitment goes and uh, what are the challenge you see especially for the campus placements so the question is uh, to aita Lee, you are on mute. Sorry, uh, the challenge for uh, campus hiring. I think uh, for the last year's campus hiring, more or less the campus hiring would have been completed by most of the companies. I don't see a challenge. Uh, the challenge could possibly be for the lateral hires, uh, but because of the uh, social distancing norms that we are all supposed to adhere, most of the companies doesn't have the kind of infrastructure to maintain. social distance at the same time uh, have a mass set of uh, freshers coming in or walking in uh, and and then taking tests so we are we are exploring multiple options uh, one is an online uh, you know test facility 
it depends you know it depends on the skill set you know there are certain skill sets it's possible to do an online test for example uh, we are a pharma organization for us chemistry biology uh, sciences uh, is the kind of model in which we operate uh, to what extent we can look at it you know certain skill sets or competencies on aptitude communication skills and these are the aspects where we can uh, you know look at uh, online platforms to leverage the support but chemistry is something that most of our interview panel would prefer to engage with the candidate in person uh, to go through a selection process uh, while there are certain set of industries which are facing tough times uh, this is common according to me you know in the last 20 years of me being in the industry uh, i've seen three recessions and every recession certain set of industries have always gone through it it's just that you know whenever there was a recession uh, that we have experienced in the past Uh, the amount of social platform was not available most of us i didn't even know the uh, quantum of impact but if you look at it corona has really blown out of proportion across the globe and then since there is too much of attention to it you know i think this is where most of us are psychologically getting disturbed honestly speaking i think historically we have gone through this if you look at uh, you know the positive side of uh, the pandemic context Uh, most of the countries couldn't manage in respect to of uh, the sophisticated healthcare infrastructure that the developed countries have has, has also failed terribly i don't think so there is no country uh, which has seen success in a scenario like this so i don't think so any one of us should be worried all we have to do is uh, be agile the opportunities are there uh, for freshers also there's no second thoughts to it Uh, we still leverage uh, a lot for example um, uh, at least in the pharma sector i can vouch for it uh, you know there's a lot of talent that is required uh, because a lot of companies need to scale up uh, for those from the chemistry and biotechnology kind of a background i do see a lot of potential at this point in time thank you so much and uh, so uh, ranga this is a question to you what are the three most list down the three most critical things that students should uh, uh be ready with to face the new recruitment procedures because the recruitment may be online maybe they'll have to give an online test online interview so everything is changing so what are the three most critical things that they'll have to be ready with to face the new recruitment procedures yeah i know uh, before answering the answer uh, this question i just would like to share one important perspective where all student fraternity should understand you know today we are industry 4.0 so world of business has seen three generations you know the first we are talking about the industry revolution and second the information revolution and third we are in today right now social and digital revolution okay and what is industry revolution talking about people took a job for survival understand people took a job for survival maybe they just they just went for work and retired from there itself only maybe students if you can ask your grandparents they started their job one company and they retain the same company they don't know how to prepare the resume also because at the time they look for a survival their main motto is that food health housing and clothing and that means i can say that roti kapda makan which is a simplistic way so that was the era boss is always right and you know grandpas of grandpas of this workforce now slowly come to the, the the second generation the information revolution here understand guys why i'm telling you we can we can clearly relate yourself here brand started building up you know in those days now the in information the brand started building up you know they went for work for what not for survival they went for work for standard of life you know they want to pay their emis they want to buy the house before 30 years so every infrastructure they want to build within before 30 years so that was the era maybe i can say that myself or lakshman or aitha you know that's a kind of generation we are in today now the third generation we talking about you know digital revolution you know that social revolution maybe i thought you know millennials all your, your the students workforce now you are aspiring to become a moving from campus to corporate i think you know now what's happening here this generation workforce are looking for the quality of life you know understand survival survival to standard standard to quality of naka I think we lost him. 
Yeah, I think we lost. We lost Ranga actually. Yeah, we lost him. So okay. maybe we'll get back to it. Meanwhile, we'll move on to the next question. Okay, uh, Anu, if you want, I can just add on to the question. Yes, yes. You yes, say. yes. So one is uh, basically in terms of the uh, what you say, the attributes or the etiquettes which we should have is especially in this uh, pandemic or online interviews is you need to be being empathetic. And uh, what I have seen in this last three months is there is a lot of phenomena in the hiring process. Like uh, you mean to say the, the digital interview, what we have talked about, right? So there is a lot of scope towards interview process change. So there will be no more a standard questionnaires which we have been using. So we are using a lot of technology. So the candidate who is presenting himself should also be very vigilant about that. I think we have Ranga back. Uh, after you, you can continue and complete your three more, three sure, most sure. important. Points. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sorry, uh, uh, Jutu. Again, technology disruption, technology. You know, technical kids always will be there. You know. Uh, so what I'm trying to say, guys. You know, the mere academic qualification is just like a pizza base. You know, your our responsibility to show the value to the self and society, which is the most important aspect. You know, like Srikant clearly mentioned that. So what kind of skills I need to you know scale up. And without topping a pizza, would you like to enjoy the pizza? I don't think so. No one likes it. So in the same way today, each one of you here, 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 you need to think how you are going to build your career, enhancing your capabilities. And today, we need to understand how the work and work life, workplace is changing, which we need to understand. I just want to give a small snapshot to you. In the past, we are working for the 9 to 5. You know, that's the kind of scenario. Today, work from anywhere. We are in, we're living in the same stage, Nune. And work from corporate office is an aspiration for me. I want a very cozy office. Today, work from any work anywhere. You know, whether you were irrespective of a country, also you can work anywhere. You know, and use a company equipment. That was the era. Actually, I want a laptop, I want a desktop, I want a gadget. I, you know, the moment I join, I want to get into all kinds of things. Today, any onboarding, today, virtual onboarding, use any device, the personal device. You can use your own internet, you can use your own office as a your home as a like office for you. You know, and you know, predefined work. Everything is a predefined structured way of care, yes. But today, customized work, you know, that's the kind of scenario we are in today. Focused on the knowledge, today focused on the adaptive learning. So my key key takeaway, my key important aspects for all of you is that, one is that you need to understand upskilling your skill set. You know, we're all talking about what kind of skill set you have today, I think, which is a absolute for you today in the, in the pandemic situation. How you are going to upskill your, you know, skill set, learning, a continuous process. And one important aspect is that the life skills, which are more important. And your empathetic life skill is one of the most important skills you need to enhance. And adaptability, the flexibility. Because today, you know, the kind of skill set we are in organizations looking for, apart from the qualification, we also need how adaptable you are. How, you know, for example, if any job is, if job is there for you, the moment I can ask you, are you willing to relocate? You should, I must expect answer from you. Yes, sir, I want to relocate. I think these are the kind of skill set today, if you ask me, uh, I know, you know, Anu, we are, this is the kind of thing we are looking because you already have the qualification. You have already degrees of your engineering, your degrees of your management. That's the only the pizza base. I don't want pizza base. I want more toppings. If you can able to give toppings, yes, I'm there to hire you. Okay. Thank you so much, Ranga. Actually, uh, there is a concept called Center of Excellence on behalf of which we are doing this program. And the Center of Excellence is exactly the toppings where we are bringing people like you to speak to the students, uh, uh, giving them a lot of extra certifications, like what Srikanth has mentioned, cloud or data particularly. Everything is going to be data and we are emphasizing data. So that's what we have been doing. Thank you for bringing those points. And uh, uh, Lakshman, do you want to add your most three important points? Yeah, one is uh, what I have uh, want to convey as Ranga mentioned is, one, firstly, is you need to emphasize on the cultural uh, fitment because you're dealing with multiple cultures, right? So basically say, I'm sitting now here in Hyderabad. And earlier I had a privilege to go attend the interview and understand the person physically on a different note. But today what is happening is all the interviews are happening at one virtually. So today uh, I was hiring for a fresher for functional experience, guys. So we gave an assessment first and then the person is talking to a person who is based in Spain tomorrow. So this person should understand the cultural difference. So it is as simple as important that I should know what I am using as my uh, interview space for the interview, how well I'm prepared about the company, because this is all a different phenomena versus the uh, legacy one which we carried. And how well are you prepared for the interview? And most importantly, you should be able to project. 
So giving this uh, opportunity of 20 minutes to present yourself in a virtual interview, I think that is a big game changer which candidates should be prepared of. So this is something which is not uh, normal to us. So this is something where we should be really putting efforts as a student or as a person who is uh, a potential job seeker to position yourself in a better way where other person can understand. Communication is no more an accent or a voice or a slang. It is an ability to influence others in a way how we want to communicate. I think that is something which every student should focus on. It's my view. Uh, so a follow-up question because you brought about communication. So how do you suggest a student has to improve their communication uh, to especially uh, to be able to, to get through these interviews? Okay. Uh, as, as I said, once, once again, uh, during this pandemic, especially, there's a lot of emphasis on the soft skills. So when I say soft skills, it is about uh, being empathetic and how you have your interpersonal skills. Suppose, uh, usually we have a habit of speaking very fast as a geographical, uh, what you say, the roots which we have, and we never stop. We continue to speak for long. And sometimes it also happens that we don't know whether other, other person is intending or interested to know our information. So that is something you should be empathetic about other person interest and you should be a good listener firstly. So you should know whether your concern or whether your area, what you're conveying is other person interest. And that way, the two-way communication when you're talking in a uh, visual mode, it is very important and very different. So being empathetic and understand the cultural difference. So suppose if you're talking to other person for, uh, in a different geography, so probably shame, I would use the word shame could be a very commonly used word there in that particular geography. But for us, shame is something, oh, we feel very bad somebody using shame on us. So this is how you should understand. And especially when you're dealing with uh, geographies like uh, Spain or you're talking to any Chinese customer, the way they speak is different. So you should be also understanding the cultural differences. That is one more big uh, effort which candidates should play when we are dealing virtually. Yeah, Besides so particular soft skills. Yeah, so true, actually. And I also say like speaking and listening to people like you um, uh, who have experience across with different cultures will automatically put you to the, those levels, actually, instead of carefully going through culture training or something like that. Speaking and listening will add more value than going through some uh, things. So that's what we bring on to this platform. As you know, uh, you, uh, Hyderabad Human Capital Fraternity is also helping us by uh, putting a lot of HRs who are seniors in front to the students through these platforms. So these things will really add value is what I'm thinking. So my next question will be to Lee. Um, this is an internal question, maybe secret to within HRs. So how many minutes do you usually make a decision when, when a person comes for an interview? How many minutes do you usually take? <laughs> It's an interesting question. I do not know who has asked this question, but honestly speaking, my personal experience of me doing interviews, uh, I don't, I don't uh, go with the premeditated approach or the first two minutes is going to be a decision maker for me. Till the time I say, my context of Oh, I think it's breaking a little bit, but yeah. Okay, so that's nice to know because we listen to a lot of things like the first few seconds will decide decide everything. I think it, it is not definitely all the all the all the time, but yeah, they, they, we call it as a interview error or a stereotyping, basically big no. perception. Yeah, but it doesn't Just happen always. What, yeah, well, just to add to what Lakshman said, I think, you know, uh, if it is irrelevant, you know, if there is no relevance, for example, I'm hiring for marketing and I see a person from finance opting for marketing, you know, where the person doesn't have any skills or exposure to marketing, to have an understanding of how this individual will fit into a marketing kind of a space. You know, these are two different diverse functions. You know, it happens at times, uh, it looks very simple, but yes. Those kind of awkward kind of a scenarios, uh, yes, there is a possibility that in the first five minutes, I would have said, come on, this guy or he or she doesn't fit into the scheme of things. <laughs> so the, in general, I don't think 
the rejection happens very fast looks like then not rejections you know see i can't you know from a hr perspective we can't be mean to an employee you know or or a prospect you have you know we still have to be empathetic i still need to complete the conversation whether whether we make up our mind or not you know we still have to engage the individual okay we so okay so yeah yeah the question is uh, uh, to ranga uh, ranga what are the best traits you know wh- whoever makes best packages right within the colleges also most of them get 3 to 4 lakhs some students get 7 to 8 lakhs some students even get 15 lakhs so what are those traits do that differentiates these students who really earn very high packages so what are those what are the ways that our students who are listening right now around 800 students so what are what skills that they build up so that they differentiate themselves to get into those top packages yeah sure i'll tell a small story here you know so i i don't want straight away answer you know do this and do that so that you will get a high package people at see, see my, our job is to enable the process our job is to not make a decision i'll tell a small story you know when you are a 3 years old maybe boy or girl you know you can imagine you were yourself maybe you are now right now all students are 20 years old now maybe 20 21 years old now teens you can imagine when you are 3 years old or a boy or girl when you want something from your parents so what you do generally if you can just think about go back to your uh, you know maybe 3 years old what do you do generally we tend to across the globe if i'm not wrong we cry we'll cry you'll get correct if i'm not wrong yes. absolutely we'll cry you'll get so yes. imagine now you're yes. 10 years old now ranga the same the crying baby gets the milk sorry there there is a saying which says the crying baby gets the milk yeah you're right absolutely you're right so uh, at a 3 years old guy 3 years at the 3 years old you are uh, you are crying and you getting now you become a 10 years old now 10 years boy a 10 years girl same parents okay now you want to ask something from your you want to get something from your parents what do you do now if you cry they will slap on you <laughs> guys are you getting my point if you cry they slap on you so what do you do automatically what do you do you ask you try to ask what do you want so slowly you'll get correct understand at 3 years old you are crying at 10 years old you are asking now you are teens now now maybe your colleges or management b schools they made a picnic to goa if you are in india okay goa is the typical place of holiday spot so now you need to convince your you, you need to go and ask your parents so how, what do you do you directly go and your parents papa you know my management school you know uh, made a picnic for goa i would like to go will you do like that i don't think so if a boy will go to their papa their father and try to convince through father her mother if a girl is there she will go to father and try to convince her mother it is a typical indian scenario i'm trying to say maybe it's vice versa or you know different changes also but what you do here you try to convince you try to convincing your parents saying that you know a lot of security is there management is taking care of all you know facilities no worry mama no worry papa i want to go because the lifetime achievement i want to enjoy i want to go there so trying to convince now tell me guys what's happening all see same parents and same you know boy or girl but you are you are behaving in a different rights when you are 3 years old you are crying 10 years old you are asking and 19 at 18 you are trying to convince who told you to do all these things i don't think so no one told you knowingly or unknowingly you are behaving your rights which are convincing different mode that is called a competency if you ask me that is what i need in industry and today if you ask me you know all students you, you you you're all qualification you have a education qualification you have certificates but what industry looking from the candidate perspective you should have the clarity you know for example what kind of job you are going so what kind of technology platform you are you are going to adopt and which company which segment you are you are you are, you are going to attack so you should have a right kind of clarity number one number two the accuracy you know the kind of job you are looking for the kind of knowledge you are adopting the kind of skill set you already learned and the kind of skill set you are going to learn the kind of accuracy you should you should have number third the precision you know precision it will make a lot of difference because most of the technology guys small kind of millimeter also will make a lot of difference the kind of precision mindset is also we play very vital role and number fourth one important be relevant which is the most important in today's context you must be relevant if i'm not relevant you'll become an obsolete you all know that yesterday's waste paper sir yesterday's today's paper 
tomorrow's what is a waste paper whatever the news will be tomorrow's waste paper only so what i am trying to say you must be be relevant and depth of knowledge and because you might, you you people might have gone to lot of internships lot of projects you know during the your academic career so you must have what kind of you know role you have played so normally when i interact with all the campus people what can you please tell me uh, what is the project outcome they immediately start sir we as a group we did i don't want we you tell me i what is your role you know what is your role you played in that project you know what is the kind of outcome you could able to demonstrate i play very vital role so that's the reason you know depth of knowledge is important and be significant which is the most again these are the very powerful actually i think it's again i, I see why i given the story to you it's not overnight you can't build all these things it's a journey towards entire your life cycle because today i am i am significant today i don't know i am relevant today i don't know if i am really relevant today you i think at least i can make some kind of uh, you know impact on this session today or impact on the you know, group discussion today out of you know maybe how many i don't know how many people are attended today some people may feel that uh, it is not very very relevant some people may feel that it is relevant so that's what i am trying to say how we are we are able to build that you know the relevancy is the most important and and i think these are the things we definitely anu i think one should you know adopt and one should continuously practice you know again competency is never remain same you know which always today if you ask me i have to enhance my competency to really beat the market to really you know beat in the industry if i am not able to you know enhance my competencies i i can say that i have master of qualification i have 20 years of experience they are all only name board or in a curriculum only in a, in a, in a bio data only nobody look at me today bio data you know people look at what kind of value addition i can do if i hire a person 1 2 3 x person y person so what kind of value are bringing to the table see what kind of you know value addition you can do how can you challenge you must have the attitude of challenge the status quo chalega attitude you need to move that i think these are the some of the skill set if you really ask me today industries are looking for and of course the creative innovativity out of the box thinking of course during the process of our discussion i'll talk about seven important competencies which are globally acquired or the all you know organizations i'll going to share over a period of time i think this is a kind of thought process i have uh, anu for you thank you so much ranga so what i understand is first is the strong desire that you need to have right for getting something so there is this first thing that you will have to have and second thing is you also mentioned that there should be lot of awareness of uh, uh, so what you uh, so the awareness of what you want and what is needed to get what you want yeah yeah so, and, and 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 to to add that point only today we want a generalist not a specialist no you can't say that i am not aware sir i am not aware mean thank you bye bye okay we need the people should aware you know that be relevant so i think you must acquire lot of knowledge apart from your technical knowledge apart from subject knowledge you also need to acquire some of, some of the important aspects how things are happening i just want to ask you one question here for example somebody come for interview today you know campus are in a fresher if i ask that guy so how you spent in 90 days in uh, lockdown maybe the first question i'll expect from a person saying that i'm so worried sir because i don't know how the job market is going on a lot of people are you know i came to know that people are not getting any jobs you know uh, i don't know whether i'll get a job right kind of job i may be worried sir maybe i can answer i can get that kind of answer the second person if i ask the person how you spend absolutely with the content with the conviction with the passion he can say that sir sir all 90 days real life took an opportunity i really enhanced a lot of certification courses go here sir i did a lot of courses sir and i also a lot of behavioral courses i learned some of the you know i interacted with a lot of linkedin professionals and you know i had a lot of i attended a lot of webinars sir even though it is not my cup of tea it is not my subject matter still i would like to understand how things are happening in both the market globally also locally also i really enjoyed all my you know i also habituated some of the hobbies i implemented sir i think that's need that's the kind of person i want i think he definitely you know add value to my business he definitely bring system in my palace i think these are the kind of things which one should understand to bring up the table excellent ranga by chance i have seen this news item today i'm sharing it on my screen uh, you can see that exactly what you have mentioned howard professor has mentioned no specific skill will get you ahead in the future absolutely the same words he has used he said like you have to become a generalist so he has used this same things and uh, yeah the such such very very important point that you have brought in that students have to get more awareness more understanding of what's happening in the industry where it is going towards 
and be able to understand see you understand the functionality you can understand the coding mechanisms you can ha you have interpersonal skills you understand what is happening in the you know entire news that you know where it is moving towards so that is very important ranga with that uh, question uh, you know i really that is becoming a generalist is so important so lakshman can you tell me how a person can become a generalist i think lee wants to ask say something okay yeah. anu just to add to what ranganath said to answer that question uh, why somebody will get better compensation somebody gets lesser compensation i think it's more to do with the right time in the right place you know that's my first uh, theory or something belief that i personally believe in you know uh, i still remember this is way back in 2001 uh, when i um, when i was attending my campus interviews i was the first person to be placed uh, in my campus um, but uh, the sad part of it is 2001 was a bad year uh, the stock market crumbled and it was a recession at that point in time my interviews happened in december and i lost my job on april 15 i still remember the date so 15 you know the company said we cannot hire uh, both of you and we one from marketing and sales and one from hr we both have been picked up and i was the first person to be placed in the job and i was the first person to lose my job also right so i somehow believe that you know right time right place uh, the opportunities are always there irrespective of compensation let's say for example if i am an organization who is hiring somebody for a 15 lakh salary trust me its life is not going to be easy you know there's a lot of expectation if somebody gets through the interview process and still on board if they do not have the competency believe me they can't survive somebody with 15 lakhs requires a lot of passion towards what they are doing whether they are specific to a skill or generalist or whatever may be the type of role the expectations also will be on similar lines not that you know somebody with a 3 lakh compensation the expectations will be on a lower side but the pressure is more on the other side also so while i say timing right time right place is equally important sometimes i may be at a time slot where i am able to do well and then i crack a better job better compensation but to sustain that also is equally important it requires a lot of focus and purpose in life thank you so much uh, dear panelists uh, we are i would like to present 5 uh, minutes on uh, our center of excellence so there is a small break for 5 minutes and we'll be back about so there are number of questions at least some 15 questions from the students all the students were waiting for this day for to interact with hrs from past 3 days so there are number of questions for after our break uh, i will uh, start asking questions from the students so are we expected to no you, no no actually i would like you all to stay back because uh, this is a, a very novel innovative concept and after i present i also want you to suggest as hrs if this is this can be added with something else from your experience will this be enough or will something be added i'm very very open to add few things to this so please stay back i'll be presenting our uh, center of excellence to the students sure, sure. okay dear students uh, uh, so we had very good uh, inputs from the hrs and we have understood that uh, what are the new technologies that uh, most of the countries you know whatever happens in uk percolates down slowly as far as technology goes percolates down slowly to us so what srikanth was mentioning is all the new technologies say cloud or data everything is is going to be data everything every single thing data engineering is going to be the top most a uh, skill that will be required in every single vertical that we are all going that that's the biggest trend that we are going to see so that we have seen and what are the traits that are required by you the additional awareness that are required by you and uh, be prepared for the interviews what are the new skills that are required so we have discussed all those things and i'm very glad that we were able to include that as part of the center of excellence as you know most of the students who are listening today are from the centers of, centers of excellence we have around 20 centers of excellence in various colleges across the country 
and we have uh, been doing uh, great work related to uh, additional courses on in certifications workshops connecting them to industry through through webinars like this and also through a lot of mock interviews which lakshman and uh, hyderabad the human capital fraternity have been helping us with bringing uh, very good hrs who have been very patient interviewing students because they come at very different levels but what we have seen is after every mock interview the quality of the mock interview has been improving because students have been taking that so very well instead of somebody explaining on the board how to answer tell about yourself how to answer um, what are your strengths what are your weaknesses if you see how other people are performing and if you listen to a live interview and get a feedback that gives you more uh, a quick learning than somebody teaches you and mugs up so that is what we are trying to bring up the all the things so center of excellence is where we are offering all these things what we'll have to offer is five connected workshops so what is connected workshops is say most of the colleges offer lot of workshops there is an iot workshop there is a cyber security workshop these are all 3 4 hours workshops where the student ga doesn't gather much about it so at the end of the year the student doesn't even remember what are the workshops that the student has attended so we are asking students to choose a path choose a cyber security path or choose an artificial intelligence path or a data scientist path and not only that if you are all, all engineers are not are problem solvers but need not be good programmers so we are saying you can also become a business analyst choose that path understand what is manufacturing understand what is banking and finance or understand what is insurance so we are saying students you can go through this connected workshops and at the end of the year you say yes i am very good data engineer yes i am a very good artificial intelligence engineer i am a cyber security expert or i am a banking expert i can be a functional analyst or a manufacturing expert i can be a, a business analyst at that position so we are offering them different routes because we believe this uh, einstein's um, saying that a, a fish cannot uh, a fish will lose if it is asked to climb a tree if fish can only swim if everybody is asked to do programming it is very difficult for that person so we are asking the student to choose whatever even if if a person is a designer say ui designer a creative person if he asked to programming he, he will fail or she will fail but if she is asked to design a very good very good user interface she will be the best so we are asking them to choose what kind what is your strength and where you can so these are the connected workshops where a person can say i am expert at something when he sits in a in an interview and the student also get five professional certifications these professional certifications are beyond that say for example entrepreneurship is a professional certification six sigma is a professional certification so these people who get into big industries they also know already the process around it they have certain skills so these things provide those additional certifications and then 50 plus webinars why we are saying 50 plus webinars is every week there is a webinar from a ceo or a senior hr like yourselves and there are 50 mock interviews that which are regularly happening and uh, the colleges are so happy that the students are able to do a mock interview before they go to a real interview recently we have done mock interviews to bbrit where the students Uh, were interviewed so very well and they were able to clear amazon interviews were for very high packages so mock interviews is the second one then we are connecting them to lot of human resources one channel for us around 400 human resources uh, one channel is uh, hyderabad human capital fraternity where the students can interact with them get the benefits from them and uh, as vishnu has mentioned uh, in in the beginning these uh, hrs who are doing mock interviews are also offering them internships if the student is really good and uh, the most important uh, thing uh, that what we have for these students and which they will benefit is the student network we are having a student network where these from these 20 colleges or the people who have become the uh, become members of center of excellence of black box can interact with each other they all will be at a level they may be at a very remote village or a remote town or in a city but everybody has same ex access to same kind of uh, speakers same kind of opportunities same kind of technology certifications workshops so all these people they can see what's happening with each other that's what the benefit of social everybody is is uh, 
emphasizing social right so there is a social network for the students where they can probably quickly adapt to each other's uh, competencies and come up to a very good competency level so they are not left behind if they be, if they are from a some other remote college or some other call so even everybody who is on this platform can up to come to a competency level than remaining behind so that is one we are offering so all this we are offering as part of center of excellence the things that you have mentioned data artificial intelligence cloud computing internet of things what all srikanth has mentioned we are emphasizing all of this things through government of telangana government of telangana is a partner for us in center of excellence so that is where we are bringing they are also promoting lot because you know if, if they are promoting very many organizations in us and uh, and other countries to set up their firms here or uh, send more business into hyderabad we we should have relevant uh, relevant talent here so they are promoting along with the students to learn all these new technologies so apart from that we also have two the uh, fest and hackathons in a year so student when they become member of the center of excellence can avail all these facilities uh, so and another thing is for we have calendar so every month we have a calendar for july calendar we are teaching these certification courses of entrepreneurship and design thinking to the students which are very important as part of uh, as part of their resume which will add value to them when they go to the interview so july calendar august calendar so we have these calendars across the year so if they miss entrepreneurship and design thinking now they'll have to wait quite some time maybe 6 to 8 months to repeat that so that we are having and early bird offer we have the students to become the center of excellence member the first 1000 will get guaranteed intern internships in the industry which is quite valuable yesterday also somebody was asking me a question how do we get an experience before joining some company because as a fresher hrs are asking us our experience so we thought that the best way of getting an experience before joining as an employee is internship so grab that opportunity go and grab that opportunity an internship where you have really worked even if it is one screen or something like that very small will add you so many skills reporting to the manager listening to the manager taking uh, taking uh, orders from the manager and making it to the satisfaction of the manager making something to the satisfaction of the manager these are all so important skills that will show up when you attend an interview so we are giving them guaranteed internship for the first 1000 students um, as part of this uh, center of excellence Uh, thing and uh, as i said these are the three courses that we are starting and uh, students you will have to know that every course is 2000 worth this you will get dozens across the year at least five you will get across the year and uh, that you will be having this month itself all the benefits of that 2000 you will be getting this month itself so this month we are having these programs one workshop on data science and machine learning and then we have this complete courses of entrepreneurship and design thinking for you so these are the things that you will be starting immediately so be a part of this disruptive learning community which is actually adding those toppings to the pizza where the pizza is the base layer you have in the college everything additional the industry connects or interview preparation or the additional certifications that you need everything you will get from the center of excellence with just 2000 per year okay that's not really a very big uh, uh, you know it's not the right pricing also for us it is just for the for for going for for the organization to keep going you know that's what the price is put at it is not a huge money you know like byju's or their 50000 or things like that but this is just for the organization to keep going that's the pricing we have done so please uh, utilize this and especially on 10th entrepreneurship courses starting on and on 25th we are starting of design thinking so avail this opportunity and uh, avail this july calendar for yourself so that's about it and if you want to register it is just www.theblackbox.com/the/register blackbox.com/register is yeah this is where you can go and become a member of the uh, member of the center of excellence so thanks for listening to me thank you so much
uh, dear hrs thank you for being patient with me and listening to what i am presenting so we'll go back to the questions especially the questions from the students and in case you have anything to add or any recommendations from your side yeah for the center of excellence please let us know yeah not uh, specifically for center of excellence but uh, in i think you had one question to lee on how we make assumptions or rejections and right so there are two points which i want to cover i i know it it happens practically for a recruiter uh, firstly uh, a seasoned recruiter doesn't look for a resume more than 20 seconds if he is professional or an expert for more than this so how you present your resume is the finest art any any candidate can do and most importantly in fact there is a radical shift in the way we interview people so there is no longer a traditional interview like where i interview for one hour or two hours no so basically in our organization we use approach called star so it is a once again a competency based interview so every question we ask will be based on the star approach it is situation task action result 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 oriented so all your questions will be on this approach so as lee mentioned until i finish the interview there is always a hope that i might interview or i might reject a candidate so when i go for a interview i always find a reason on how he can be rejected so that way if i go with a uh, intent to get in that mode i have all reasons to be captured about why i want to hire that person at the end of it. and every interviewer will compile and then we compare and when they we do a stack ranking so gone are those days where i create a perception or a notion by uh, ambience or uh, kind of the way he dress or coming from a college coming from a company no definitely not so these concepts are there and these are mostly uh, kind of integrated with the behavioral pattern so when i ask a question tell me about yourself so that also is a stupid question in my view at this moment because i should be also prepared to understand yourself even before i interview so if i am the person who is going to ask the question i say okay i found in this resume a, an interesting so tell me more about that rather than tell me about yourself so this is something which you are expected in the new normal or a kind of pandemic and this is where the interview evolution is going to change from the traditional way of interview lakshman my one question that uh, probably is is very intriguing to me also um, is there any point or any uh, interview e that you thought wow i should have this person in my organization so what is that wow point that uh, makes you feel this point, this person should be in this organization so basically if i intend to hire a person first thing i look at adaptability and attitude so skills is something which i always can uh, inherit is personally i believe and that's how i got into the journey of uh, recruitment i was never a hr guy until i landed because i was passionate towards technology and when i learned technology as lee mentioned uh, there was only development at the time so if i want to survive in the industry i should do hands on coding and when i was in the industry or i was kind of studying at that time vc plus was was the language and i think which i realized that i can never survive in the technology after i learned vc plus plus so that that's where i decided that i should not be in technology but now if you look at there is a lot of scope in the way we perceive so from my hiring perspective i look for a person who can actually adapt to the situation and who can learn and who can grow along the system so today when i was hired in the system i was a kind of a recruitment guy so today i cannot live with only recruitment i should be able to move on to any stream based on the organization need so that is something which ranga has mentioned right so you should be flexible as per the organization need and don't wait for opportunities to come and knock you opportunity will never come you should create the opportunities and you should project in a way doesn't mean that you have a job you are having handsome salary no that is not going to sustain or you are going to yield you should always strive hard to show yourself that you are different you are unique and you have the potential to grow with the business yeah thank you so much uh, ranga the question is to you uh, how should because i see that uh, you speak a lot to students you are a speaker at various colleges you contribute lot to the academia community so i my question is how should colleges support students to come up uh, to that expectation from the industry all that you have been saying right uh, so instead of listing out all those reasons the pizza toppings how do, how does a college has to support the students to get those pizza toppings yeah sure uh, ano 
uh, before that, and I just want to share one viewpoint after the Central of Excellence. You covered all topics, but only one topic which is really missing that the behavioral part is missing. I think uh, you know you covered all the technologies in IoT and blockchain, all kind of thing covered. But one thing I think you also keep one module kind of you know behavioral today. Most of the companies are doing the BA interviews, behavioral event interviews. As Lakshman mentioned that you know because today people are having qualification, uh, you know everything is there. But the behavior at the time of five minutes, how I am selling myself, the five minutes only will trigger. Now all IMBs don't get one crore of salary. You know, absolutely they'll get. You know, to start with twenty-five to one crore. You know, the MSc guy who did recently LPU, lovely professional university, she got one crore. Monsanto hired the MSc agriculture. She has been hired for one crore salary. MSc, MSc. I'm talking. I'm not. She don't have any. You know, management qualifications also. So what I'm trying to say that. the behavioral part today's contest will play very 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 vital role because uh, these students these uh, these uh, you know uh, millennials has to work with an organization four generation of the people the gen x the gray haired people the gen y gen z and millennials and the moment they enter into you know they have a discussion with the gen x gray haired guy no this is not my cup of tea i don't want to discuss with him at all i think that's where the friction starts you know immediately want to quit the company because you know i don't want this organization because end of the day people also that's why lakshman clearly mentioned the flexibility the adaptability because learning agility you know learning learning through uh, you know google absolutely right we we appreciate but learning from experience also will matter a lot of matters actually i think that's where today's students lot of most of the students sorry to say that their life cycle their you know the shelf life of the recruitment the uh, being in the company is only 2 or 1 year if you ask me most of the angst that you know The moment you ask the question, why sir, why you left the company, sir, that is not my cup of tea. What is your cup of tea? How can you decide? This is not your cup of tea. <laughs> we appreciate your decision making, but end of the day, you need to also understand. People are leaving the good companies. What I'm trying to say that people are leaving small companies. I understand absolutely understand, but the leaving the branded company, legacy company, they're leaving just because of the blend is not there. The behavior and you know the economic blend. See, that's what I think, which is the most important aspect in the two the pre. Uh, uh this pandemic situation also the post pandemic situation also which is very uh, will play very vital role now coming to your question uh, anu sorry to say because i always try to say because this is only opportunity for you also understand you know these elements you know don't think that you know i am talking more okay <laughs> so <laughs> so the industry expectations yes if you ask me there was a huge gap what industry needs what academy is doing that today and the industry needs the curriculum based industry today all industries are looking for the curriculum based you know uh, uh, industry based curriculum if you see i think today the trend has started already most of the university universities they are having incubations of the companies like uh, tech mahindra they have incubation pcs they have incubation you know the manufacturing company the hyundai has a incubation in centurion university when i visited last time you know like uh, you know mahindra and mahindra they have incubation So today, all industries also they're looking for partnering with the institutes. They want to put an incubation. The industry experts are going for the last semester. They're able to train those people, and they're also giving the internship. And maybe based on the in the internship exposure, they're also offering the jobs. I think that's the one of the systems really workable, both the industry as well as the institutes also. Not I'm talking about not only uh, even IT companies also they're partnering with most of the companies actually. I think because yeah. then when i when i able to train the guy in the last semester that means 6 months after 6 months before 6 months of before join with the campus absolutely i can able to tell my culture my about my industry culture the kind of values i can able to demonstrate the kind of expectation from the candidate the kind of job i'm looking for the culture fitment everything i can able to ecosystem i can able to build the 6 months is more than enough to employ to you know student can able to understand the day enter into my campus my corporate i can treat like a just like a old employee you know that's the kind of you know gap today i'm seeing that yeah i think i'm sorry you are going to say something no you no, know yeah, exactly that is the objective of the center of excellence where we are putting that functional understanding and also the behavioral part is there actually it is not put it in the slides but okay. definitely behavioral part is there for the students to develop interpersonal skills is very much emphasized on the center of excellence uh, said, yeah sorry to say anu interpersonal skills i am listening since last 20 years when i started my journey my career people used to say you should have interpersonal skills really interpersonal skills is absolutely fine the communication the behavior everything but 
above that there, there are certain kind of part which is really missing the behavioral part you know as i said you know for example when i am when i am able to talk to gen gen you know generation x guy i am able to patient listening to understand because today students aspirations are very high they want everything in a fraction of second they want a promotion they want to you know uh, taking additional responsibility because they don't have any legacy why people scare why so many startups are today closing because of they don't have legacy i can open the door i can shut the door because i don't have legacy the same way if you can imagine the kind of companies the manufacturing company will they close immediately shut them is very 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 difficult to close because they have a lot of legacy is there legacy is talking about so what i'm trying to the behavioral part is which is a bigger than the interpersonal skill that's what i i would like to you know mention here and uh, the second point uh, which i'm looking for the industry adopting the mentoring approach which, which is again very much important today even today industries like you know most of the companies also the new body concept we are also giving one mentor to the all the new joiners till he completes one year of life cycle you should the person join in the organization she or he should have the one mentor until unless the mentor concept is you know adaptable in the system it's very difficult to sustain in the organization even sustain for the individual you know uh, uh, student also because you can't uh, treat all student in the same way because every student have their own unique capabilities so the mentorship you know will will give you identify the capabilities of the student so that you can also guide him which industry you want to go you know you also see, see mentoring concept is a very beautiful concept because you can spend good quality time with him understand his you know uh, economical understand his behavioral understand his social needs everything is a holistic approach again see the moment you could able to understand you can give a right kind of advice right kind of session rather than saying that you please attend this amazon interviews so i think that's where you know uh, mentoring concept will come and emphasis on the skill based education of course which is again need of the hour we are starving for you know all industries starving for the i need a skill set people people are not getting today i need a people again classroom theory to practical based approach of course industry also need to go to the off the job and on the job training programs people industry visits also because i still remember when we are doing all mbas i used to with a mandate saying that four industries has to visit mandatorily manufacturing industries go and and do the interview with the workman sit in the time office understand how things are happening because there are basics today you know i think i'm not saying that we go to ba- back to basics but at least you should have some kind of you know the granularity of the, the skill set and again workflows exposure through the live projects and the incubation which you're already talking about i think these are i think which are very very uh, relevant today if you ask me again i'm talking about the relevance more very true uh, definitely impact the students uh, journey in the corporate world okay so very true and i also like this concept of mentoring so much and we have introduced as part of zinka if you remember we requested you also to mentor so as part of center of excellence i also request uh, lakshman to just think about because so much hrs are so helpful all the mentors uh, all the mock interview hrs are so open to help they are eager to help the students so in, i'll also uh, have further dialogue with uh, lakshman and ask whether few of his hrs will be happy to mentor few of the students or take a college as a ment- uh, as a mentoring platform so you can take a uh, college and say okay this college i will be able to mentor so that if uh, it is possible from the uh, uh, hyderabad human capital fraternity that will be great lakshman probably we can have this dialogue sure sure definitely so what do you think will hrs be interested to uh, mentor a college and the students i think definitely most of us are already doing as a part of job i am sure ranga would have been a seasoned mentor in fact i have i, I keep getting lot of uh, references from his mentorship as well so we can definitely review who has bandmate and who can definitely uh, take that as uh, one of their core item and we can work on it no problem so there are some questions i'm moving to questions sure. from the students i think yeah that would be better we can move the questions yeah, yeah. so uh, fayazuddin sheik uh, he's asking is it good to have certifications uh, while we are in during the covid time is it good to put the certifications in resume i think so. the question so he said is it good to put the certifications we did during the covid time in resume i think so actually yeah okay. absolutely oh, why not uh, sorry uh, you can definitely can this is the additional skill this is a credit for you apart from your regular uh, eight credits which have academic credits this is the ninth credit you must uh, you know capture that credit also so that you know the screening of the resume also may be very fast 
you know any additional skill always will give added advantage simple i feel that uh so uh, another question is from rachana bs what she is asking is if we do an internship in a company uh, are there any chances that company will hire us yeah there are two ways one is uh, com- it depends on the kind kind of company which we are in so if you look at uh, some of the companies they specifically engage internship only to uh, what you say to get the best out of the talent and some companies are very specific that they want it only kind of a uh, kind of fixed term for two or three months they finish the work and they get uh, get them move on so it purely depends upon the kind of uh, foundation that particular person gets and the kind of roots he lives there so that this person always can be called off so if i have a opportunity in the future and i have a reference where the intern has created a platform for me in the system i would be the first person to approach that person oh okay yeah thank yeah, you it's a trust building exercise internship has to yeah. be looked on two lines one is uh, you know for your course completion process you need to go for an internship at the same time if each of us give our 100% during our internship process then there is every possibility you know when there is a head count that comes up you know i would rather go with a known devil than an unknown angel unknown devil yeah. so i think be sincere in your internship process or be authentic give your 100% and i'm sure if there is an opportunity for organizations i would specifically pick an intern yeah, even, I, even i would go with the person with the intern whoever is uh, working yeah, with us internship is really valuable i don't know see another question usually i get is uh, lakshman whenever i offer an internship to students in another college in, in another company also they ask how much is the pay which i don't like it because you know it is also learning so much of learning than what is actually taught in the college it's so much on the job learning so even if they don't pay you uh, you ask them you request them you be behind them and get it i think one of the biggest problem uh, more than the industry and academy is the mindset which uh, the mentor or faculty who it is it should be like they should give a lot of emphasis on learning rather than package or branding or all this stuff so that is that is something which the roots should also come from the family as well as from the fellow society beings because what is happening is there was days where we used to really uh, kind of very crazy and hunger for the talent uh, we wanted to really learn at that time but today the most important deciding factor is the compensation or the brand i think that shift need to change because market will also change now so we, we we are slowly into gig gig economy now and there will be a lot of freelancing opportunities which will come in the future so there will be no more a kind of a full time job or benefits and also we need to move ourselves or adapt to the changing world so we also need to be very clear very specific as well on what we want to acquire so that doesn't mean that i am only learning for money means no it will not work so you should take an opportunity to learn yourself and believe me you have lot of future so you can't earn or compare with one person who is in the veteran industry from last 10 years and 15 years and you want to reach his number as a milestone in 2 3 years that is not going to work you cannot sustain as lee mentioned if somebody is giving you that much money means there is a lot of pressure on you you need to prove that continuously yeah to add that point this can be developed only through mentoring again yes. so that's the challenge that's again that's the difference see the person who can continuously tell that boss you know internship is for your learning internship is for your enhancement internship is see that's what the mental ego ni always will be the peer pressure will be there i got some other you know 10000 rupees they are paying you how much you are getting or i am not getting anything re so that's where the pressure starts the mentor is there he can tell don't worry money is not important the kind of industry you are looking for absolute industry even i want to talk to your guide also see that's where the people can understand you know they able to you know make themselves very ready madely acquirable i think see that's where the mentor concept always play very 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 vital role it's so like a parenting simple so first it is also not a salary it's a stipend that means it only is given to manage your domestic expense it could be yeah. as simple as travel or your food that's it so that is the mindset which should should inculcate from the mentor or the people like you who are kind of providing the opportunities for them okay thank you so much yeah please please be mentors to our students and sure, uh, sure. yeah so next is uh, the question is really very good probably the question is anybody can pick this i am an average student in academics so uh, what do you suggest for students who are average students in academics to be able to uh, get a 
job. So I am the student definitely in my academics. So what I strongly believe as a person is how you represent, how you position yourself. So it doesn't matter. There were uh, days until my college, I was never focused on ranks and all. So today we have a lot of grades and all. I was always a backbencher in my whole school life. And I started focusing on my academics only once I got into my college thing. So you need to be very clear on how you want to position and what you want. Say, now we are more of a social. In fact, if you go back 10 years ago, there was not much of internet or digital. So we always have one mentor or one person in the family, like you, you are supposed to follow him. So somebody has done an MSET means you go and enroll for MSET. Somebody has done engineering, so you have compelled to do engineering. That is not the case. So today you have land of opportunities and whatever is available to you, you always need to self-diagnose what is your strength, what is that you can do. Once you are clear on that, I think you can create yourself. Academia is only a base. Percentage is only a criteria. Doesn't mean that if you have 90% means you're getting a job just like that. No, it is not. At least that is what I strongly believe. Others can also come in. Yeah, absolutely. I also agree with you. I'm also an average student, by the way. Till 10th class, I'm a Telugu medium, local Telugu medium. Then, I, of course, picked up, you know, different way. And that's what the passion definitely determines the individual career growth, you know. Until unless you have the passion, the zeal, the fire in the belly, you know, which is the most important. If you don't have the passion, na, even as Lakhman rightly said, maybe 60% with be the cutoff to getting into the interview call letter. After getting the interview call letter, 90% also, I don't, it doesn't matter. The 60% doesn't matter. The 10 minutes that makes you, how you are able to sell about yourself. Because everybody should have selling skills about yourself, you know. You should be the brand ambassador for yourself, you know. I think if you, how it will come, how you will become a brand ambassador. It's very easy. It's very difficult for you to make a brand ambassador. Unless you have a conviction about yourself, unless you have a passion about yourself, believe in yourself, yes, I want to crack. I want to demonstrate. I want to do something differently from the other people. So I think, boss, I think, guys, you know, average is only the, you know, uh, is only uh, maybe the percentage of the criteria. But average really doesn't make about your career. You can, if you really have the passion, the conviction about yourself, Yes, you, you are there in the, the field of uh, or whichever the field you want to get into. Excellent. Excellent. Actually, you have to add. So whatever you are lacking, probably you'll have to keep adding other things to your profile so that you will stand out. Everybody can stand out by a focus or with the help of a mentor. You always can stand out. Okay. So And, and one guidance I, I can give it to you. Sorry to interrupt again because I want to tell very clearly. You should make no your own SWOT. SWAT, you know, you should make your own self SWAT. You know, if, see, normally we are, we are always believe that I want to, you know, uh, enhance uh, uh, my social uh, social status. You know, how I want to enhance my social status. I mm -hmm. want to wear a, you know, uh, fast track watch. I want to wear a Pepe Jean uh, trouser. How you are making yourself? You also need to invest on your self. Make your SWAT. What is your strength? What is your weakness? What is your threat? What is your opportunity? What you can do, go to mirror, in front of your mirror. Stand out in mirror and make out a way because mirror is the best friend for you. Mirror is a mirror is a person where you can talk about everything about you. Even your best friend talk about, best friend really don't talk about you because best friends always need admires. Until unless you admire, people always say, yes, I'm a goody goody, we are good best friends. The moment you start sharing the you know, different feedback, the best will become worse. So that's the reason I think you need to make your own smart, invest on yourself, self audit. Last six months, I don't have this much of skill set. So, how much have you improved now after six months? So, these are the skills I added. These are the communication. These are the network I build up. Not network means not Facebook friends. I'm talking about the LinkedIn professionals. So, these are the webinars you know I attended. So, these are the kind of skills I attended. I think these are the way you need to keep keep. It is like a bank balance. Always credit for some points. Balance means not your money kind of thing. So, your father has already given a good you know qualification for you. Now that is up to you how you're able to increase your credit balance, not by money, by adding your skills. I think that's a, see, if we are not telling all these things to you, Jan, they're all experiences you're sharing. If I'm not able to have the passions like you, we today, we talk, Anu, don't invite all of us today to talk about and share with you all. See, that's where you are there. Ultimately, you define your career. That's why I told you, you have to craft your career. Those days you have gone, what is a career plan for me? No, no one will tell you. You tell me, where do you want to see yourself next down the line of two, three years. Sir, this is my career ladder. 
Today I'm here. By 2023, I want to hear. Yes, you are there. I think these are the important. Thank you so much. Uh, in short, what uh, Ranga is saying is, network is net worth. Yesterday Absolutely. Net worth of a million dollars or something like that. But network is net worth. And that's what the social network we are asking you. Don't remain behind. Network with the HRs in whatever way possible. So the question was, uh, Ranga, the question was about an average student. Everybody have problems. So the, now the question is from Topper. The Topper is asking, I'm a Topper, but our college is not getting reputed companies for campus placements. Please suggest how to ace off-campus placements. First of all, how you define what is reputed? Is Google, Facebook is reputed? No, on your mind? Are the package reputed? What is meant by reputed? So first you need to have the clarity on the reputed. And you know, the topper also, you know, the topper the, as, as you know, as we discussed, uh, average student, uh, topper means if you are getting uh, gold medals, na, we are not offering by seeing your gold medals. Okay, we are not seeing, uh, we are not offering by seeing your 10%. 10% maybe, yes, may, you may be a clever student. Yes, we agree that. That doesn't mean that you get a job in the companies actually. You know, topper, maybe you have a lot of aspirations. Yes, of course. Uh, and again, you need to also balance your aspirations. That's more important. Again, the, the balance of mind also important. You know, how you want to, for example, you get an offer in a one company, XYZ company, XYZ company. And within the three companies, definitely you can have a choose. That's again, uh, you, you, you cannot expect every all the campus sites to not to be get into Google or Facebook. There are so many companies which are really starving for the talent who are offering more uh, number of salaries and more number of career drop also. So I think again, that depends on the, you know, uh, as a person of individual student, maybe Aita also can add uh, the, his perspective. So that's what I, I look at actually. I think, you know, if on a positive side of it, if your campus is not helping you get the right companies, which you think is right, it's all the more better in my view, because if the companies come to the campus and uh, you know, from a parent's perspective, you're forced to attend the interviews and the moment you get it, whether you like it or not, you are forced to pick that job. But the flip side of it is the fact that, you know, there's not enough support from the college. First, you have to be clear on what you would want to pursue. And once you're clear, the opportunities are wide open. As Ranga rightly said, there are not one or two companies, which is going to be the end of the world. There are many companies who are passionate about working and you get an opportunity to choose the right one. The way to the best way to ace an interview, a lateral interview is follow your passion, follow your instincts and then approach uh, the right job opportunity, do your best and I'm sure each of us will be successful. I just want to share one example here. I do mentor to some of the students actually at 2018-19 batch actually. You know, they got up there, you know, they took in a, nowadays, you know, all colleges are offering for the dual specialization, marketing and HR, HR is major or marketing maybe minor and the vice versa. I think two, two students actually through campus, they got selected. Of course, even campus also, there is a formula that once you get an offer, you cannot attend the other, other interviews. Absolutely. We need to agree that. And uh, he got a job in uh, HDFC bank as a collection agent, actually collection uh, manager kind of thing. And of course, we don't want to do that. Of course, the peer pressure is there. Family also, parents also encouraging him to, to take the job because HDFC is a good bank. You please join that company. He took the offer. Believe me, uh, still still last semester itself, I'm in touch base with him. He took the offer. He also asked me also, I said, if you're not interested, to tell again, convince your parent, I'm not interested in this job. I want to get into some other job. But of course, because of parent pressure, peer pressure, he got the offer. He joined that company. Believe me, sir. Believe me, if your students also. He could not be able to sustain minimum three months. He is not at all enjoying even every day is crying. Every day is creeping. He used to send an SMS 12 o'clock. Sir, I'm not enjoying what to do. Then I said, believe me, I spoke to his father. I said, can you allow me to talk to your parents? He said, no problem, sir. Then I spoke to his father. Sir, your, your student is a very brilliant student. He got a dual specialization. He's more inclined towards the HR fraternity. He want to get a job into HR. I'm there to help him, to enable to help him to get a different kind of job set. Don't necessarily put a pressure on him. And of course, over a period of time, his father also understand, you know, he finally they agreed on that. He resigned that job. Now he got a job in Baiju's as a recruitment journalist. I think he joined uh, maybe last week only joined that company. So what I'm trying to say, guys, if you're not interested, of course, ultimately your parents also put a lot of pressure because they spend a lot of money on you. They, they have their own expectations. Uh, because my son want to get into this company, my, my daughter want to get into that company. Absolutely. We also need to respect uh, 
parents views also having said that see that's where the skill of convincing the skill of influencing that's a competency how you are able to convince you we want to go to goa why don't we apply the same thought process also here believe me this is today lacking believe me this is the only today lacking they are not able to convince they are not able to influence they are getting into a problem the problem really made them to you know throw turmoil every day new nonsense they are not enjoying ultimately they are getting into different problems so my singlest uh, view is that please understand about yourself where do you, that's what i said clarity of thought you should have clarity of thought where do i want to see myself which company which segment which job depend on if you are there to try to achieve that definitely you will get into the right kind of company you enjoy minimum 3 years if i am not wrong i can't give more than guarantee actually <laughs> okay so one question probably difficult for you guys actually the question is difficult for you guys it, it, they are asking how do you decide a freshers package <laughs> okay so basically a uh, freshers package it happens in three categories in our company at least so first thing is uh, we have a collaboration and partnership with campuses so whenever we review any campus salaries and all we go with the market data and we have our own our own uh, guideline as well as internally so we position based on that it is not like a experience salary which keep changing based on the candidate no i decide which kind of uh, college i go it could be a tier 1 college or a tier 2 college so depending on that my salary ranges will be there it's a flat and free second thing would be on my um, internal off campus hire so off campus hires are slightly lower or i would say category 3 when compared to the campus hires and second category what we have is we have partnership with finishing schools so these are kind of finishing schools better than a college but they are very much uh, sos we go and pick them one or two people whenever we have a project need like it could be a testing guy a java guy or any kind of schools so whenever we have a need we go and touch base with them and they deploy them in a less than weeks of time sometimes it's two weeks of time so these kind of people also have a different salary so in my organization taking as a sample we have three categories and usually the tier 1 colleges are uh, paid high and they also follow in range with the market so market range we usually have once again a market data company like in our case we deal with radford so radford is the company which gives us the salary range and we usually take a median in that and then we design our own package and some companies which i also have seen through my experiences the package looks lucrative but on hand is once again a slightly it is tricky because they keep some some amount as a bonus or a kind of loyalty bonus they usually call it and if you stay in this company for 2 years or 3 years you get some kind of component and if you meet this goal some kind of benefit they show but it's not a real package like 15 lakhs or 20 lakhs what they show so it is basically a company based policy but usually any company follow the guideline is basically on the market data and internally they have benchmark so it doesn't mean that i get a person with zero experience and i pay him 7 lakhs and i have a legacy person who came from market with 4 lakhs for one year initially the competencies might be same because they are working the same project so it should not create a unrest in my existing team so i should be very clear and very balanced what kind of uh cream i am hiring and it should also sustain the organization need as ranga mentioned if you don't have the legacy and you just hire people just because you want to leverage your brand you will suffer you will suffer in the long run because you cannot take this overhead as a cost and at the same time your internal unrest will create more cost pressures for you anu you are on mute thank you so much thank you lakshman and uh, thank you all uh, there are few more questions but i will be relaying these questions to you and get these answers back to them the questions are like uh, uh, i mean like Ch- because uh, the china problem will be be having more jobs going forward so things like that i'll be relaying these questions to you but um, we have uh, some time to be, uh, you know lot of questions related to center of excellence where i asked vishnu to take those questions so you know with this uh, i would like to give ask you to give your concluding remarks uh, on the session for the students and you want to go first yeah i i as i said in the beginning i want to give a 
uh, there are seven globally you know accepted uh, you know competencies which are very relevant to every individual uh, irrespective of student or professional i just want to tell you very clearly so one is that breakthrough thinking breakthrough thinking is very very important and potential because if you want to really identify the potential of the individual the breakthrough thinking will play very vital role so you must you know enhance you must inculcate you must adopt that kind of you know uh, competency always and uh, once you acquire that because there is no there is no measurement i can't say that today i have breakthrough thinking until unless i get the situation i need to break through so that's a way so breakthrough thinking is a continuous process so please adopt that uh, competency number two collaboration which i talked about you you have to work with the four generation of the people in the organization any industry you talk about whether in respect of it its or manufacturing or telecom or infrastructure any segment you talk about you have to work with the all four generations until unless you have the competency of the collaboration approach is very difficult for you to sustain collaboration you because see, today everybody has to depend on on each other i need to acquire some knowledge i need to get this some kind of collaboration with my colleague with my interdepartmental function so collaboration is a competency you keep consistently manage that collaboration you keep consistently work on that collaboration approach the third one is that customer sensitivity customer sensitivity which is a powerful and very very important aspect of the so today end of the day any company you talk about the product has to sell reach the customer so while reaching the product definitely customer look for the the best on the out of that so how i could able to enhance the product quality the customer sensitivity you know ultimately the reaching the product to the ultimate customer so to you you must have the the customer sensitivity of the capability of the uh, competency the fourth one is that influence in the outcomes because again the most of the youngsters who who getting into projects in the you know after reaching from campus to corporate they will assign some projects so the moment they complete the project they will submit the project to the management some project they may not get success you know they immediately say that this project is not feasible you please you know get rid of this project what will happen immediately you will get sulking you will get humiliating you will get cribbing are my project never seen to the management so that's where you need to have the the influencing outcome how you will be able to uh, influence the, on this competency you know because if you have the merit on the project because any project has to look for the sustainability has to look for the financial feasibility has to look for the entire geographical challenges there are so many aspects will get into in this uh, project any project so any assignment normally you take you take care of so influencing outcome which is the most again important competency you need to develop the fourth one is the fifth one is the people development the people development of course when you get into any organization you also need to develop the people along with you and uh, within the organization as an individual today also you need to develop and the seventh one is that the sixth one is that the drive for excellence see today we are all looking for the excellence drive for excellence so what is that out of the box what is that extra mile so i think drive for excellence is one of the competency you keep consistently you should have the rigor on that and you need to work on the drive for excellence because today 10 people are waiting for interviews i can't hire all 10 people ultimately i can hire one or two why what is the difference between the one the one the one and two who got selected which is nothing but the drive for excellence because they could able to demonstrate that excellence which you could not so that's the difference actually the last but not least the people leadership the leadership doesn't mean that you need to get into 40 years of age old and you need to work for a manager in the organization leadership start from the student level also how you are able to adaptability how you are able to making you know uh, collaboratively with the, all the you know within the society within the uh, fraternity of your you know your own team that's a kind of leadership i think these are the seven set of competencies which always any industry wherever you go any company wherever you go you keep upgrading the skill set you keep work on this skill set definitely one fine day all these things will impact your career as a as a professional and as an individual in the society also so thank you very much thank you so much ranga so request lakshman and uh, uh, i try to give uh, your closing remarks to students yeah leave you you can go next so corona is here to stay so don't get worried about it and uh, there are a lot of scientists who are working on bringing both medicine as well as vaccine uh if you try and get more emotional uh, or the fear factor builds up in your mind it is very unlikely you will do well in your interview process also. so 
So please keep the corona context out of mind. It is here to stay. The more we get used to living with it, make sure that you know uh, manage uh, you know wear a mask at all times and uh, do the right uh, practices whenever you step out of the home, uh, whenever it is required for the job. Uh, be open, uh, stay committed, uh, stay authentic in your, in your interviews. Don't try to uh, say something which is not relevant, right? So I'm sure all of you will do well wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lee. Yeah, Lakshman, can you please give your... Sure, definitely. In fact, I have been uh, witnessing some of the questions by fellow students. So one most important thing, which is very essential, it's not only for the students, but also for every individual is to stay positive because uh, we are dealing with an uncertain situation. So mental health is one very important and driving factor which will affect your uh, state of mind. So these two will pass on. So there are much more to come. It's not only this bio war, but there is much more planned and much more ahead of us. So we should be very strong in what it is and we should face every tough situation. And this too will pass on is the mindset which everyone should adopt. And most important thing is we should be agile. We should not be fragile. Like we should be agile and we should adapt to any situation. Markets will be there and there are so much, uh, what you said, there, there is a very drastic change which you would see in every stage of your life, right from the job opportunities to your nature of your life. So you should be very positive. And most importantly, don't take anything to heart. Like don't, come with a pre mindset like I want this. I was seeing one question like that. I joined a company for a placement and after that, I realized that it is not a cup, cup of my tea and uh, how soon I can change other companies. So this is something which is not, uh, not required to even think before you even get it to a job. So you should be positive. So every company has its own, own trade. So even in this pandemic, you have a job and you're paying means that means you're lucky. So there are so many business which are unable to survive. So you need to be very fortunate if somebody is still talking to you, paying you salary and making an effort to help you. I think it's the greatest thing. So there is a definitely an opportunity. Most of the companies are consoling themselves on their impact of the business. Some business have definitely made a loss. Some business are consoling. There are very good opportunities after COVID. At least in my organization, I have... Uh, part of the leadership discussions. So there will be a lot of business which will be uh, moving to low-cost centers. So India is one of them. And other thing is there will be opportunities on cloud, which you already have compiled. Cloud, AWS, cyber security, project management, change management, and there will be also a lot of uh, focus on software development. Since that there's a lot of digital happening, so this legacy standalone applications like SAPs and Oracles will all move to cloud. So there is a good way. So you all need to do is put your energies on right platform and don't go with a pre-mindset notion that this is a small company, this is the sal salary which will not be sufficient. No, you should be prepared for anything and everything. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. It was a wonderful session, wonderful questions from the students. And there are a few more questions I will relate to you and uh, uh, relay, uh, relay the answers back to them. And looking forward for mentors from uh, your HR fraternity, going forward, I, I'm sure students will benefit a lot from it. Thank you so much once again. Uh, there are, uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Lakshman, uh, Ranga and Aita. We'll get back to you shortly on uh, the questions. All right. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic day. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. you all. Bye bye. Yeah. Take care. Thank you very much. We have uh, the CSI team joining now, and also I have some questions, Vishnu, related to the Center of Excellence. So we can leave. Right? Yes. So we can leave. We yeah, can leave. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everyone. Thank you. Yeah. It was a great session. I mean, I've, re I've been reading the comments from students, right? So everyone was appreciating what all Ranganath was saying, Lakshman, Ita was saying. It was such a great feedback for them. So I hope the Saturday went very well for everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. See you. So See you all. You know, the Bye. first question is, what kind of internships we will get for the first thousand students? Yeah, the internships are of technology domain, management domain, sales domain. So it depends on your profile, actually. We can't uh, specify exact uh, internship opportunities for each and every one. 
so we have tied up with so many companies uh, of hr companies right so many technology companies so among that we will first prepare a e portfolio of you will circulate it among various companies whoever wherever there is a requirement for you you will be shortlisted among that is the answer yeah. okay the question is uh, vishnu if i am a first year student uh, is it worth taking yeah. membership of center of excellence the, now true yeah first year students benefit the most from it because you will have four years of learning the people who are in third year or in the fourth year they have to learn it very quickly right so they don't have that much time so when you are in your first year or your second year you have plenty much time to adapt to this skills learn at a slow pace apply more than what you learn so look for better opportunities every step of the way so it is always potential better beneficial if you start soon right yeah yeah uh, okay so how is it so the fourth year student is asking like how is it how uh, how are the mock interviews conducted are the hrs real hrs yeah the mock interviews are conducted yeah hrs are from technology companies like uh, lakshman was one of our hr then what you say uh, uh, what all the hrs that spoke on our platform are from real technology companies they conduct interviews Uh, regular interviews on a day to day basis so the same thing will be applied for you so mock interview sessions are generally for you to uh, become better evolve uh, so understand before an actual interview how are you preparing for it so what happens typically in an interview let me just correct you that whenever any hr asks you some difficult question your interview will start very well but whenever any hr asks you a difficult question from there onwards the interview becomes dull or you feel you lose confidence and all those things so once you are prepared using these mock interviews it will be much beneficial for you to excel in a actual interview yeah and uh, and also uh, throughout this session i've been telling we have this tie up with hyderabad human capital fraternity where around 800 hrs real hrs they will be helping you not only in mock interviews but also real interviews if you do your mock interview well they also hire you so internships and mock interviews happen with real companies and real hrs and uh, uh, how can i manage my college courses if i take center of excellence related courses so there are so many managerial courses as well like we said entrepreneurship is a management course design thinking is a management course business analytics finance uh, data science all those things are management related courses as well you don't need prior technology coding language or anything all courses which are part of centers of excellence will be taught to you from basics from level 0 onwards you don't need any prior requisite knowledge anyone who passed their 10th or 12th can easily get acquainted with it they have some common understanding right so they can get acquainted start off with these courses the first level will be introductory level second class will be professional class hrs will guide you from the very first step of what is it the basic concepts if you take an entrepreneurship course they will guide you from the first level of who is an entrepreneur to what how can you become an entrepreneur with whatever idea that you have so that is how it goes yeah and also uh, students actually if you are already you i know you will be having lots of your academic work center of excellence work will not put any additional burden on you uh, it may require some 3 to 4 hours in a week which is not very difficult if it be whether it be a entrepreneurship course or design thinking course or an a, 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 a workshop it will be done in cooperation with your college so it won't put, put any additional burden or effort on you it will be um it's just more pleasurable to be part of center of excellence than having more than being more burdenous okay so uh, yeah. one person is asking i have no strong technical knowledge so by taking center of excellence membership will it help me learn technical skills from basics yeah true that is what we were addressed right now right so there are technology courses and workshops and professional managerial workshops as well both will add benefit to you one after the other so if you go and sit in front of an interview or if you go attend a job they won't select you there are two rounds right one is technical round one is hr round so for both you will be prepared accordingly so at the end of the day all students the whole mission of this 
our company is to excel student skills or make him streamline his career path so that they get their dream job by the end of when they pass out so from their college so the entire system is built in such a way that you are uh, all these workshops or all these courses that we are offering on this platform are streamlined one after the other so if you are good at technology take up technology related courses if you want to if you are good at the management to take up managerial related courses and uh, what we suggest you is take up both so that you will have a combination of both domains and which will add so much value to you going forward and for those uh, who are worrying that uh, okay how do i manage both academics and these additional courses together so these additional things that we are offering are across an year right so you will have holidays in between you will have weekends most of our programs are run on saturdays and sundays every day also there is a program for uh, enrolled students but then it is not too much we understand that a student can't focus more than an hour or 30 minutes in a day so our typical sessions classroom sessions live sessions will won't won't last more than an hour so i hope in a week a couple of hours for you sparing towards that is definitely beneficial and all these will accumulate towards the end uh, i request i sincerely request you all now during this we i mean during this lockdown period there are there is so much information that has been circulated online right say abc course or xyz course so many courses are happening so many people are offering you free information and all you learn that information but uh, try to stream like that make one workshop connected to the other workshop you can't just learn, learn things randomly and expect uh, good things to happen in the end so if you you have to be like jack of all trades and master of one okay so that is how you have to become so you have to master one particular stream and try to get jobs in that particular domain or sector okay. or industry yeah somebody asked ma'am how should central how would central excel membership help in my campus placement so that's what uh, we have discussed all through to today's session is how it helps in campus placements because they are looking at you for various skills your awareness general awareness your certifications and your understanding of industry what people are talking about it in the industry so all this platform gives you all that interaction with the ceos interaction with hrs your mock interviews so all that additional things that you need for campus placements uh, center of excellence gives you those certifications and learning actually it is not just certification like coursera there will be teaching then follow up there will be a small project and then another connected workshop so everything will be in follow up okay so this will be great for you for your campus placements so uh, before uh, we leave uh, anything else you want to add uh, yeah there, there there are a couple of questions i got on my phone let me just read them out so one in one is from tasneem how will the workshops and hackathons be conducted during the lockdown so during the lockdown most of the programs will be online so like we uh, now this uh, international conference we were able to do online where more than 1000 students took part in it every day so that is something we can do hackathons also can be conducted online workshops also can be conducted online our instructor will share their screen on live and you can also open your laptop or phone and start coding or uh, uh, working on exercises over there so that is something which you can do and the other thing is ma'am will the sessions hackathons workshops etc be taken will all be online so now it will be online but uh, as soon as the colleges reopen we are have an extent of excellence in most of the colleges so like uh, we know that you all know that we are tied up with uh, csi people so csi has a branch as a office in uh, the department as a club in every college of every engineering college across india so we can associate with them and provide you as soon as the college reopens and there's a couple of questions other questions like ma'am tell me how should i do if i am a diploma engineering student yeah if, if you are a diploma student engineering student or a management student these courses that we are offering are multi domain right so all these things will help you gain better knowledge so it doesn't if they are not uh, prerequisite stream specific but after learning these courses you will become a, a streamlined you will streamline your career path into one particular domain all right 
so i want to extend my career in ml and ai so yeah for ai ml we have an advanced diploma program also that has been running in few centers of excellence where trainers go to their uh, college every saturday so they train them for 10 hours it is all hands on workshop every day they work on live projects and codes uh, that are from industry uh, people so all these things are happening so you can reach out to us on this number that has been shared in the youtube footer for any further queries so first of all thank you so much yeah you are doing thank you and yeah it is really appreciated ma'am will it all be online if you have to go somewhere to attend so for now yeah, like uh, what it was saying that this the corona situation is not going to end any time soon so it is you have to be very careful try to stay contained and uh, try to be safe try to learn whatever you get online and uh, apply that whatever you learn today you have to apply that in some way or the other help uh, help yourself get better so when you become part of the centers of excellence it is not like you are paying for some course or you are paying some for, for some workshop it is like investing in yourself which will up you which will help you appear good so when you invest in yourself so when you invest in buying new clothes when you invest in buying a motorbike or a car so what you enjoy them right you use them daily so this is what centers of excellence is what will help you build your career all right so it is a ladder for your career which will help you make your profile look good which will help you make your resume look good you can add various things when you sit in front of an interview you can tell them that okay these are the so many things that are done so many students in lockdown are just spending their time being idle or playing games or anything right. so you can add you add benefit to your professor a uh, profile right so it is always benefit to adding value to your profile thank you so uh, yeah over to you now answering the questions thank you so much students thank you so much uh, for the closing remarks i have dignitaries from csi here i have uh, uh, mr vyas who is uh, the the president of csi and the immediate past president uh, we have here and also we have mr durgesh here so thank you sirs for coming uh, you know for both the opening ceremony and the closing ceremony and uh, you are uh, already you both have spoken and uh, those uh, comments were really really very valuable to the students so thank you once again for coming back would like uh, thank you thank you ma'am yes yeah, sir uh, sir I also i will i will have to tell you that uh, all the four days there simultaneously some 1000 students 1500 students were attending but every day the total number of views were 15000 so across the country around 15000 students were watching every day sir so it has been really good thank you so much for your kind words excellent And, excellent ma'am uh, sir so um, durgesh sir can you please uh, uh, request vyas sir and uh, sir to speak now please Durgesh sir, you are on mute. First of all, I uh, thanks special thanks to the Anuradha Madam and the teams from the Blackberg Engineering uh, Engineers Private Limited to organize this international conclave. Actually, I I attended that uh, FDP especially uh, in the uh, uh, AI machine learning and deep learning and taken by the Mr. Mali. It was excellent and so that I motivated and I. Uh, taken the next step for the association with the black box and submitted our proposal to the csi so that definitely the team is very good and this four days conclave uh, is i am also thankful to the csi members dr uh, mr vyas is a president honorary president dr nayak is a respected and uh, honorary uh, immediate past president and the chairman academic committee as well as award committee for this time and dr saini vice president and dr vipin tyagi is a secretary i am thankful to all of you to join with this program and this four day conclave uh, uh, this four day conclave is related with the number of topics like ai entrepreneurship and so many hot topics are there and i think students have got to be enjoyed and a lot of opportunity in front of the students there so my thanks to all of you and then i'll request to our uh, professor nayak sir immediate past president and the president to speak something about the closing remark for this 
Thank you very much, Durgesh. Thank you very much, Anuradha Ma'am, for your kind invitation and collaboration with the Computer Society of India. So thank you so As much. one of the partner for this great international conclave on emerging technology. So except second day, I had been connected in every day. First day, I had been there also, where a very important topic has been discussed. The theme was that artificial intelligence for industry. And second day, we are having a very good topic also. There had been a good topic that design, uh, thinking, and strategies for sale. And third day, you are having the uh, theme like the innovation, learning from idea to uh, project. And fourth day today, the really the outcome part, that means preparation for a post-COVID world. The thing is that uh, I must have to congratulate Anuradha Ma'am and uh, other organizer who had been there at the background of this organizing this uh, great international conclave because the things have been kept in such a very sequential manner actually which will really will be the input for preparing our youth masses our students for um, for a future uh, nation and for building a future nation and developing a future world you so see today because the first day the topic was artificial intelligence and in industry and definitely everybody is acquainted with the importance of artificial intelligence today. And it's a different application like business intelligence, like computational intelligence, like emotional intelligence. And really artificial intelligence can be treated as the source, as the cause of the other computing technology, the empowerment of the other computing technologies and other applications. And particularly when we are talking of, we should be ready for the industry 4.0 and uh, where the IoT concept, Internet of Things, and the standard form is the Internet of Everything, will be coming into the implementation, which will be definitely got the, have been empowered by the integrated power of artificial intelligence, sensor technology, communication technology, networking, and all these things. And it really, it was very re relevant for the student community for the discussion in the first day, first day of itself. Along with the Industry 4.0, the COVID has also compelled us to take all the teaching and learning facilities in the online world. That is, we can, I can tell we can enter to the education 4.0 also simultaneously along with the industry 4.0. And that for that, our youth mass, our teaching and training community, as a teacher, including the students, both should be prepared for that. We are going to change our lifetime in the uh, post-COVID day and definitely well, every thinker should have to think how the infrastructural facility will be available to cope with the challenges that when we will be implementing education 4.0. Uh, where because if you tell how I am telling education 4.0, you see in the ancient days, days of the Treta and the Dwapar Juk, there was a Gurukul system, Acharya was the delivering the talk, where students and Acharya both were sitting under a tree that I designate as the education 1.0. Education 2.0 by using of the physical infrastructure like classroom, blackboard, teachers, and all these things. And after the emergence and the in integration of the telephone, television, and some of the communication tools in the educational facilities, we became able and capable to impart the open and distance learning, and that became the education 3.0. But what will happen after this COVID and what we have experienced in last three months? That means we have completed our course curriculum completely with the help of the online um, uh, online mode where the digital tools and techniques have been uh, properly utilized for imparting the training in spite of our having poor infrastructure throughout the country. We are not cope up with that. But the thing is that the today's discussion what was there, that is the preparation for the post-COVID world. And we type to think this education 4.0, it will be to prepare for the education 4.0 will be a great preparation for this post-COVID post -COVID world, COVID-19 world. So then second day, the origination that the idea should be originated and the design thinking, design thinking matlab, that is the planning of the thinking in the uh, young mind and decide of the strategy, which will take to the him to the third day that the innovative idea can be incepted. And once the innovation is incepted in the mind so that the idea can be generated and then the total process, how that idea can be translated into the action, how that idea can be converted to the action so that that can be formulated in a project form and which can significantly 
contributing to our mission of the honorable prime minister that is the make in india startup india and overall digital india the three complementary and supplementary projects that have been undertaken for the total development of the nation so definitely i think these are the best ingredient that this great organization the black box engineers along with the computer society of india have given to the 15000 of the participants directly or indirectly in these four days so the, the so that that the inputs have been provided to them so that they can be empowered they can be self confident so that they can be able to face the future challenges to come after the covid 19 post covid era they will be able to face the challenges and they can contribute significantly for bringing the things from local to vocal and vocal to global what our honorable prime minister has told so they can significantly contributing to the factors of the money making india to digital india as well as the start of india which will enable to make the country a self reliant and will enable to make the country self confident this ko hum bolte hain atmanirbhar bharat but the thing is the tax is very high, uh, complicated because the thing is that the destination is very distance hum jo bolte hain manzil dur hai lekin hamara youth mass ko isko prapt karna hoga manzil dur ho sakta hai rasta kathin ho sakta hai path durgam ho sakta hai लेकिन हमारा युवा वर्ग का जो लक्ष्य है वो लक्ष्य अभेद्य होना चाहिए आई थिंक आई डू रिमेम्बर ए ग्रेट स्टैंड ऑफ भगवत गीता कृष्ण कृष्ण टोल टू द अर्जुन जे जद उग्रे विषमी परिणाम अमृत पमम तत् सुखम सात्विकम प्रोक्तम आत्मबुद्धि प्रसाद जम अर्थात जो पहले जोहर समान होता है विष प्राय होता है और परिणाम अमृत समान होता है वही वास्तविक सुख होता है ये हम युद्ध मास को बोलना चाहूंगा क्योंकि आने वाला दिन में इनका जो पथ बहुत कठिन है इसको अनुशासन प्रिय होना होगा इसको डिसिप्लिन होना होगा डिसिप्लिन डेडिकेशन एंड डिटर्मिनेशन दीज आर थ्री डी फैक्टर थ्री की फैक्टर फॉर द सक्सेस एंड आई डू थिंक ऑल दार्टिसिपेंट हुई पार्टिसिपेटेड इन दिस ग्रेट इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस दे कैन बी डेफिनेटली एबल टू टेक दिस मैसेज इन दर माइंड सो दैट दे कैन मूव इन ए वेरी डिसिप्लिन एंड डेडिकेटेड एंड डिवोटेड वे to fulfill the objective great objective to make india as a self reliant india as a self confident india and as a great nation that should be established before the world with these few words let me conclude my speech by wishing all all the best as well as pray to the god may god bless each of the participant participated in this uh, international conclave may god bless them to pick up the daffodils from their future from the paradise of their future career thank you very much thank you so much anayak sir that was very kind of you you know very inspirational also and as you said um, we also have a mission and vision of really giving world class education and preparing the youth to become atmanirbhar as you said but thank uh, you very you, much ma'am thank you definitely i have i am confident that you will be doing your organization will do a lot to what level of conference you have organized conclave that morning show the days as like it it is it, so that that you will be having the great contribution for the national development thank you ma'am thank you sir um and also as you said uh, rasta mushkil hai but uh, with the help of csi i think we'll be able because we are small and csi is has right. such It's such a strong organization with the help of csi yes, sir, being know. able to reach that mission sir definitely but the fullest cooperation will be there thank you so much sir so request mr vyas sir to give his comments yeah mr vyas our honorable uh, president yes sir please Sir, your video is also off. Please, on your Hello. video from yes, 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 yes. Put it back. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. You are audible. Hello. Uh, I am audible. Yes, you are audible. You are audible. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I am audible. audible. You are completely okay. audible. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Professor Nayak, for a nice words. I think uh, thank you for la last four days uh, in association with Blackbug, we had a very nice uh, uh, the proceedings on various topics of artificial intelligence. 
industry iot and many more thing and uh, covid and designing etc i think uh, when we have around more than 1000 students across the country linked to this uh, international seminar on emerging technologies which have been really taken care by all the students and many of the professionals and the academicians has already talked about many more things in last four days i hope most of the students has been benefited by these things and uh, in association with computer society of india will be uh, and uh, black bug we may be doing some more knowledge uh, seminars based on various uh, inputs which we get from the students and the organizers i must thank the Anur anuradha and other organizers who have been conducting these ex these uh, types of seminars and webinars all over the country and in association this was the first time when we have associated with black bug but i hope we had a very good time and uh, the students who are associated and who has been connected for last four days they are really benefited by the emerging technologies which has been discussed in last four days and with these words i say uh, to the students and because computer society of india has got large base of student chapters all over the country so with the help of the black bug and many other institutions when we talk about this more and more students can be involved i was just to hearing to the last session where you have got the panel discussion with our experts the college of uh, the center of excellence etc i hope most of the students has got the real answer to various kind of uh, questions which they have posed and i hope basic uh, aim of these kind of webinars is to develop student for the professionally they are ready for the uh, marketing to various organization because as we all know when we go to the institution we have got a lot of academic job to be done but the, besides academic we have to get the things in the latest technology arena also and for this only this international seminar was webinar was arranged for last four days so most of the students and maybe the young professionals who have attended this webinar they must be benefited by this with these words i must thank the organizers and i must thank dr durgesh who has really collaborated on behalf of computer society of india for this kind of activity and we see in future more and more such collaboration with computer society of india so that we are benefited the black bug and computer society of india and the, ultimately the students and the professionals of it are benefited by the latest and the emerging technology which are coming up and looking into the arena of covid 19 obviously we'll be having most of the webinars only but soon after this webinars are over we will be surely having some physical seminars or the conferences which can be arranged at the later part of the year or early next year thank you very much with these words i thank all the organization and especially to dr durgesh who has coordinated for uh, arranging with the computer society of india and blackbird thank you sir thank you all thank you thank you, thank you, thank you president uh i i would like to actually say one word uh, say uh, a few words here so uh, partnering with such big organization like computer society of india is first time for us for black buck and if there are any mistakes from our side uh, towards the no no no. Please, no 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 whenever no. we partner absolutely. first time there are absolutely few perfect ma'am yeah absolutely perfect okay all right so no. but surely we'll get something more and uh, this partnership will lead us to some higher levels okay sir and also yeah. i have to mention that uh, from the fdp program that durgesh sir has mentioned durgesh sir has been a uh, driving force behind uh, the partnership he is he he was like driving me also for the oh, partnership <laughs> he has been always uh, um, very prompt and actually he was initiating uh, the discussions around it and i'm sure computer <laughs> society of india will be having many such partnerships and great initiatives uh, with the help of sure. sir uh, can you also please yeah. give your last uh, uh, closing remarks durgesh sir this uh, sorry it was uh, this program was very successful and uh, definitely we will go, we will uh, in future also we will do the uh, activities uh, jointly with the black box engineers and the main thing is the delivery by this black box experts are is having a very good quality that's why i attract with you especially for the molly uh, you know molly is uh, his, his explanation is very good 
so i everything is okay and for that after this for the collaboration also we will have a, we will take a one meeting after that and there is a one thing is uh, we have pointed out that uh, you have to be the uh, member for this csi this your organizations then first yeah. of all i i i'll send you the one uh, form for that uh, corporate members the every uh, um, in industry should have the corporate members of the csi so you will become the corporate member and we will uh, have a more association with this and everything is organized by you is was excellent and you know uh, anuradha you are uh, um, you are conducting the program is also very nice way and you are explaining to the students for the every every question and answers and everything is you are, you are uh, really good so i'll uh, thanks to you and especially thanks to the vishnu also i interacted one day in the vishnu vishnu is also explaining very well he has given the answer to the student each and every answer uh, very smoothly and uh, I, I i not met with the srijan but uh, you most of the time you um, mention the name you will ask to the srijan you will ask to the srijan and all these things but i think there is no need to the connect to the srijan and you have taken all this care okay now you are having the all uh, the good uh, uh, efforts you have done a lot of efforts to do this okay thank you thank you to all thank, thank you thank you so much sir thanks and looking forward to meet you right thank, thank you. you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Jurgis sir. Thank you, thank, thank you. It was really thank nice you. connecting with you all. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. yes sir. Right thank from you. the first day, uh, your I, first I, I talk was, was really good, and your I, last talk was also exceptional. Yeah. Apart, so, apart from I happen to, and Radha, I happen to hear you for a while when you are answering okay. the questions. So the students, they were really, uh, you have really handled the questions very beautifully and answered each and every question in a very befitting manner. Uh, right, Anuradha and Anuradha and, so Anuradha and Vishnu. Apart from this CSI, if you want to anything uh, for to connect for for the students for the to share yeah. the my knowledge and all these things, I am with you. Thank you. Thank you so Definitely, much. sir. Okay. Thank, thank, you so thank you so much. You. Thank you, Anuradha. Thank Have you. Good all. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah. Bye bye. So, good day. Thank you, Naik yeah. sir. Thank you. Thank you so thank much, you students. Tonight. Thank you, bye everyone. Bye. So thank you so much, students. Thank you, everyone. I see so many comments that are happening. Saying that you all like the session a lot. Thank you so much for attending, making this such a huge event. So regarding the certificates, they'll be provided to you. Don't worry about it. And if anybody has missed any of the sessions, they can go back and watch it again. So every session is recorded live on YouTube, so you can revisit it. Uh, more than the certificate, the knowledge you possess throughout these sessions. interacting with the speakers prominent persons from csi that add so much value see no in no other platform it's been 3 months since covid 19 and interacting with csi speakers is the first time that you have been doing in your life right so that is what that we offer you so there are several other programs that happen across the year this year next year even if you are in any stage of your life you can come up with us become a member and experience all the excellent programs that will help you shape your career for a better way and uh, Thank I, you I, everyone. Request, i i request to the all students who are attending this to become this if you are not a csi member to become the csi member so that you will get yeah. the other benefit also apart from this black box uh, program yeah, so that lot of yeah. programs you are conducting and this uh, uh, so that if you are not a member then you have to be a member of the csi Okay. Yeah, that is very excellent. CSI, all those people who are part of this computer science society are excellent people. So I request you all to be become a member of their group as well. So you have CSI groups in your college as well. So that becomes much more easier for you. Yeah. Uh, you have faculty yeah. people who are part of this CSI group and all. Then help you guide you every step of the way. Thank you, everyone. Right. Thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you all. Thanks to the students who have attended. Thank you. this four days all the best with your future endeavors everyone thank you thank have a great day thank you sir thank, thank you. you bye thank you bye bye, bye.